Hello, Twitch chat. Hello. Look at that. It's Twitch chat. What's what's Twitch chat doing in here on this day? Night time on this time on this thing. Hello, how are you doing? How's everyone doing today? What have I what have I missed? Have I missed anything? I've missed nothing. I've missed nothing. Nothing to do. Nothing to code. Might as well wrap it up here. Thanks everyone for stopping by. Uh, glad that we could get our uh, second stream in this month. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I woke up at 9 p.m. Yikes, Geek Pirate. Yikes, dude. That's not very healthy. What are you? What are you doing? Waking up at 9 p.m. That's that's just not right. Boy, I'm warm. Having a, a long sleeve shirt on is uh, is a bit roasty right now. My sleeping schedule now almost aligns with your streams. Pfft. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna be a hard one to line up. I love how people every once in a while come in here and they ask, "What's uh, what's your what's your streaming schedule?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> How's it going? It's going okay. I got a I got a candle going, so it's good. It's good. Waiting for some people to show up so we can do some coding. Playing around with this wax a little bit. Honestly, candles are pretty pretty cool. I wonder if I would have the same schedule that I have now if I uh, if I grew up in like a different century. Like if I had to work by candlelight at night, would I just would I just do that or would I actually uh, would I actually get up at a normal time? It's hard to say. <laughs> oh, you gotta turn on the bait screens, yeah. There you go, there's the bait screens. <laughs> Is that a Yankee candle? You think I can afford a Yankee candle on this stream? With this Twitch chat? And these donations? No, we're on, uh, we're on the Nature's Wick budget here. We got the Coconut Saffron Nature's Wick here. <laughs> uh, I need something other than C Matrix to put up on the bait screens. God, candles are bright, dude. There we go, Farty Dip. Thank you so much. Now I can afford all the Yankee candles I'll ever need. Thank you so much, Party Dip, for that support. Hell yeah. I'm glad you're supporting our zero content so far today. <laughs> Just warming my already warm hands over a, a candle. This is fantastic. We've got the right vibes here today. I don't think we've ever streamed on a on a day like this at an hour like this. There's always what ask 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 aquarium. What? Okay, 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 oh, okay. Ah. Uh, My last emerge sync was 30 days ago. Mmm. It's not in the Gentoo repos. Not in the Gentoo repos. This that's disappointing. Um <laughs> What else? What else can I use?
<laughs> this guy tells me to update my windows or else 30 days ain't nothing. Man, I need some, uh, hmm. There's an overlay for it. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get overlays over there. I mean, I could, it would just, it would just be, uh, it'd be some work. <laughs> What's Hollywood? Run a noisy text. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is good. It's gotta be it's gotta be in the Genty repos. Is there anything other than C Matrix in the Genty repos? Gotta, there's got to be something, right? N curses analog clock. Lame. Hmm. Damn it. Are there really no good animation things over there? I'm disappointed. Cock off fire, that's not in the repo either. What the hell? Cock a demo? No. Nope. <laughs> what about pipes? Mm I don't no, nah, I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm disappointed, chat. ASCII Aquarium is in Pearl. <laughs> God damn. Got to get lib curses pearl. I could I could maybe transfer that over. There's also caca fire. That looks good. How is that not in Gentoo repos? I'm disappointed. Where is even the source for that? There's lib caca. Damn. It's included with Lib Kaka? I'm trusting you, chat. You better not be liars over there. It's probably configuring right now. That's why it takes so long to build. It's probably like two C files and a 30 second configure script. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Wow, 
Why is it so small? There we go. Okay, it doesn't resize. What's Kaka demo? <laughs> there you go, chat. <laughs> there, there, there you go. There you go. There's Kaka demo. It's literally turns. <laughs> nice. Nice, dude. Uh, I do want ask ask aquarium. That looks pretty good. Let me. Uh, I guess I can. One of these drives is probably good, right? Doing the important things before stream, you know. Um. Right protected. Mm, wipe FS dev SDA. Make FS EXT for Dev SDA. There we go. There we go. We got this chat. We got this chat. We're we're making EXTs. Uh Dev SDA mount mount. Pseudo chown R pleb pleb mount mount. Hey, there we go. Ask Aquarium. Get clone this. Sync, you mount, mount, mount. Uh... Might need to install the term animation module. Uh, what's the Perl animation module? Dependencies. <laughs> Damn it. Term animation. Nope. Term ANSI screen, term UI. Ah, uh, there's just curses. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try curses. Uh, 
I don't think curse is gonna work, but we'll see. So it's in the E build? Dev Pearl Term Dash Animation? I mean, that doesn't exist. He packaged it himself, yeah. Oh, is that like a... Oh, that... Okay, we're not doing it. Fuck it. Yeah, I get fucked. I opened up another fire and it hasn't opened yet. There it is. There you go. So we got some fire, we got some matrix. <laughs> Term animation. Man, Pearl just seems like a shit language. <laughs> Is there any value in Pearl? We'll put this here. There we go. There we go. Pearl number one. Ew. Ew! Ew! Pearl is very close to perf. I don't know if it is. That just doesn't really sound like Pearl to me. Oh, man. Oh, now you have a firewall. Yeah, exactly. It's keeping, it's keeping us safe, chat. It's your opinion of Golang, I think is just worse than Rust. <laughs> It's just, it's just a worse language than Rust. <laughs> it burns the ransomware away. Yeah, we need an antivirus. That's the, that's the real trick. An antivirus will keep us really safe. I don't know why we don't have an antivirus here. Like, how, how will we keep our computers protected from viruses? It's a garbage language. Garbage collected language. Yeah, see, I, I don't like garbage collectors. I think they're just terrible. Now it looks like your head is on fire. I don't... I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it has that illusion. <laughs> I do like how you can't tell that it's ASCII. <laughs> like, it's ASCII art, but it doesn't look like it's ASCII art. That bokeh. Okay, I actually had to use go because I was targeting a MIPS target and I couldn't get Rust Ring to build for it. What? What? Couldn't figure out how to cross compile. That sounds like a you problem, not a Rust problem. <laughs> I've got no problem cross-compiling for whatever architecture I can dream of. Because the ring lib depends on boring SSL. Well, yeah, I mean, why would you use libraries? That's what's so weird to me. It's like, you can't, you can't just use a library and then get upset that libraries suck because they just, we just know they always do. Like... <laughs> There's nothing new there. Where's where's the state of the art in that? I tried to use a library and it fucking sucked. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Just write your own implementation. See? Crypto's just overrated. 
The only reason you'd use crypto is if you have something to hide, you know? You know? <laughs> what are you trying to hide? Are you a communist? Are you trying to overthrow the U.S. government? <sighs> Sickening. People like you shouldn't have encryption. <laughs> I think that screen's too bright. Is my keyboard struggling? Why does it feel like it takes so long for terminals to launch? How much is this using CPU wise? Nothing? Weird. Cock up fire is weird, dude. Only baddies use crypto. Exactly. Exactly, dude. <laughs> Overthrowing the US government stream incoming. Yeah, I turn off all my crypto. I'm I'm out here to be public and share everything with the world. I I wouldn't ever hide anything from anyone. You tweeted about open sourcing TKO fuzz a while back. Is it still planned? Nope. Nope. Management's too fucking scared. Because someone might use a fuzzer and find a bug in Windows and report it. And that, that, might, that might cost us thousands of dollars. So let's just have the bugs stay in there anyways. Ooh. It's just an excuse. Like, in reality, there would actually really be no negative impact to open sourcing a tool like that. But, of course, people want to pretend that it would, like, be the end of the world to open source a tool like that. So, just thousands. No, I mean, people think millions, to be honest. But, yeah, it's just kind of how it goes. It's so fucking ridiculous. It's an insane argument. Yeah, it's it's objectively wrong. Um, but, you know, <laughs> someone in the legal department has to feel like they're doing something valuable with their lives. So, <laughs> that's how it goes. Open sourcing proprietary tools, sometimes hard due to licensing. Nothing's proprietary about it. We could just, uh, we only have one dependency and we could just inherit the dependency, uh, the license of the dependency, and it'd be no problem. I think it's just a lazy excuse for people who don't want to go through the, the troubles of getting an open source. I think that's pretty much why. I don't, I don't think there's, I don't think they actually believe in their reasoning. I think it's just a fucking excuse, uh, so they can just not do the paperwork. I think that's just entirely how that works. I think that's how, like, most stupid arguments actually come about, is they're, they're just shitty excuses to something that they don't have an excuse for. Um, what tool are we talking about? TKO Fuzz. How will Fuzz OS have better fuzzing perf than a normal OS? Oh my god, in so many ways. Uh, mainly because we'll get direct access to page tables. And we can just change out pages whenever we want. And we won't have shared memory. Talked about this a little last stream. We'll maybe get into it as more people show up here. <laughs> Quick hacker on licensing problems. RM license. That seems to be the trick that everyone seems to use. I don't quite understand why they seem to think that works. <laughs> but people try it all the time. <laughs> oh, man. Damn, it's warm. I'm tempted to, like, open a window. It's the cock up fire. Oh, that's why it's so warm. 
That's why it's so roasty. <laughs> the whole Ruby world went off the rails. Uh, cause someone licensed a dependency as GPL. Nice. 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 Classic. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. The license wars. One of one of the most pointless arguments. <laughs> Once again, lawyers got to make money somehow. <laughs> I just thought Ruby was on rails. <laughs> Thoughts on PHP's Git server being compromised? I, f I don't really care. <laughs> It's just kind of how it goes. <laughs> just kind of how it goes. I really wouldn't expect anything less. I see I see zero reason for PHP's Git server to not get compromised. So I can see about a million ways it does get compromised and I see about zero ways that it doesn't get compromised. Just kind of how it goes. That's how things are. If you don't want to get things compromised, uh, stop using computers. That's the trick. <laughs> there's, there's no, there's no way around that. We've built a terrible world of software, and th this is what we get. This is what we get. Defeatism. <laughs> we'll get we'll get there eventually. Eventually we'll get there. When will PHP die? It won't. <laughs> PHP will be around for a hot minute. Terrible world. We make a shit ton of money in that world, yeah. PHP dies with WordPress, so never. <laughs> God damn. I don't know, dude. It's it's pretty crazy. It would just it would just cost too much money to uh, to make the world secure. So fuck it. We don't need to do that. Why would we make things secure when we can just do whatever we want and make the most amount of money in the least amount of time? Is PHP fast? <laughs> no. No. No, it's not. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a fucking garbage language. I know hating PHP is a joke, but WordPress b gives PHP a bad name. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's, uh, it's a language. You know? PHP dies when G Golang grows up. Mm. Might be pretty far off. <laughs> I don't know. I think Rust will take off before Go does, to be honest. I think Rust is already taking off. Hello, reformed dolphin. How's it going? <laughs> What's the main characteristics of the OS design for fuzzing? You start from scratch, are you basing it off something? It's uh it's all from scratch. Main characteristic is it doesn't use shared memory. That's probably the biggest the biggest deviation from standard operating system designs. Remember when Facebook made a PHP dialect that translates to C++ because they couldn't make it fast? You mean the language that they write all of their stuff in? <laughs> that they still use? Hack? Their primary language? <laughs> Has <laughs> still to this day <laughs> that they have like a one month boot camp that they teach you hack during when you join because that's what they write almost everything in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's popping today? Nothing yet. We haven't really decided what we're gonna do yet today. I mean, I've kind of I got ideas, but I'm not 100%. Thought Facebook did a bunch of OCaml? No. 
<laughs> no one does a bunch of OCaml. <laughs> like, Facebook does a lot to C++. Yes, that is true. Yeah. No, no one does lots of OCaml. <laughs> Maybe a, a few prominent researchers at Facebook did things in OCaml, but I know a lot of researchers use OCaml, and there's a lot of researchers at Facebook, but I wouldn't really say that's something they're, uh, they're trying to do. <laughs> it's probably more that people joined Facebook who wrote things in OCaml. Chain Street uses OCaml, that's about it, yeah. Yeah, it's like a few academic groups are pretty big into OCaml, uh, and that spreads out a little bit into the OS Dev and Finance, uh, not OS Dev, um, the AI and uh, Finance communities. Chain Street keeps OCaml alive. God, that's crazy. Oh, man. No shared memory between cores? Nope. Uh, the idea is to fuzz user space programs. The idea is to fuzz literally anything we want to fuzz. So whether that's with a hypervisor or emulators, we're not too picky. We've got, we've got a billion different ways that we can fuzz things. Fuzzing things is not the bottleneck the, uh, the perf is. You should write everything in prologue. Oh, gross. Gross. Facebook does have Reason ML OCaml that compiled to JavaScript. Nice. Two terrible languages. Nice. <laughs> oh man. When will we rewrite the Constitution in Rust? When the uh, Ethereum people get their way, uh, which is never. Oh, Camel and Haskell are better than Rust. Eh, I'm gonna go with a no there. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with a solid no. Um. <laughs> you can't compare Haskell and Rust like that. That's fair. Haskell and Rust are pretty different. Honestly, oh, Camel is quite a bit too. I don't know. <laughs> have you heard of Pygel VCS? No, version control system? I have not. Is there any reason to switch away from Git? Because <laughs> I feel like Git just works really well. Uh... Buddy of mine got a job recently maintaining a print system in an PL slash B. <laughs> He's starting to regret his decision to accept the position. Did he know going into it what he was getting into? <laughs> if that was a surprise, then I could understand that. But that's uh, that's some masochistic behavior there. Not as much as he should have, yeah. <laughs> God damn. Uh. It's supposed to be more mathematically sound, plus it's in Rust? Do I need a more math mathematically sound version control system? Is that a problem that I have? I don't think it is. <laughs> APL is where it's at. If you see code written in AFL, you understand nothing. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, you're just, you're just not going to really be able to beat the best language in the world, which is Rust. I've heard Git could be better about binary blobs. I haven't had too many issues, but I also don't go too heavy on, uh, on binary blobs. Game of Life and APL. Oh my God. <laughs> The ultimate app in a tweet language. Yeah, that's uh that's an interesting one. <laughs> that's a that's a new one to me. <laughs> God. Why does Rust have to have the ugliest syntax in the world? It doesn't. Have you have you seen C? 
<laughs> Have you seen any language without types? Question mark? If you'll gulf everything because you have a billion operators. Oof. Does it have overloading? If it doesn't have overloading, it's not good enough. Yeah, I don't find Rust syntax ugly at all. It's like, honestly, not that much sugar in the language. It's pretty straightforward. I would say it's like one step a little bit more sugared compared to... Uh, C, but it's a lot, it's a lot cleaner than C++. Yeah, people whine about that all the time. Yeah, I don't get that. It's kind of weird. I feel like people maybe Google, like, ugly Rust code, and they see, like, some really shitty implementations of things in Rust. But, like, <laughs> type strip syntax is garbage. How can optimal typing, like... Or optional typing make any logical sense? Yeah, I think optional typing is stupid. What about the the brain fuck syntax? That's fine. It's fine. It's good. Brain fuck allows you to have any other characters. You can do whatever nice formatting and spacing and indentation you want to do. <laughs> the lifetime stuff makes them confused, and they think there's much more than that. There really, yeah, it really isn't. I don't know many people who are doing things that actually have fucking lifetimes. Like, lifetimes are, uh, they're a simple concept, but most people aren't using them. Most people are just cloning strings and shit. Like, people who write relatively high-level code just aren't really working with lifetimes. If they're working with lifetimes, the auto lifetimes just work for them. Can't do fucked up shit with the preprocessor in Rust. Yeah. Having having a preprocessor that doesn't just jam things directly into code. Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, gosh, I love this setup. Hell yeah, thanks so much, Bunny3000. Um, and what's the white space programming language? Uh, better than BrainFuck. Feels like a theory of programming language lecture. I don't really give a shit about programming languages, to be honest. Macro rules is pretty ugly, though. I want declarative macros 2.0. Yeah. Honestly, I've gotten used to it. And there's a couple things that I'd like. I'd like to be able to reference things by name in macros. Uh, yeah, there are a couple things. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. Honestly, I think procedural macros should be supported by the language out of the box. I think it's way too hard to, like, actually do derive macros. Macro rules is okay, I think. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's one of the best macro systems I've used, but it still has a lot of room to be des desired. Do you think fuzzing guys can make use of deep learning? Not really. Um... Arguably, fuzzing is deep learning, but I would say not really. The problems in fuzzing aren't aren't learning problems. So, unless unless you abstract like ML and AI to basically do anything a human could do, then of course everything could be an AI problem. But in reality, a AI is pretty fucking useless for pretty much anything except for like image recognition <laughs> it's it's not the most useful thing in my opinion hyperbolic of course in rust macro declarative is a good uh declarative 2.0 is a good feature in nightly box syntax also box syntax has been in nightly for like three or four years now I've been using that shit for as long as I've been writing in Rust, and it's still a nightly. I don't think that's coming anytime soon. <laughs> I'm sure 300 people are doing their thesis on AI-guided fuzzing right now. Yeah, 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 and it'll be about as useful as uh, the, other, the last 300 fuzzing papers I've read. Not at all. <laughs> The problems in fuzzing are adoption and usability. 
and harness ability. They are all human problems. None of the problems in fuzzing are academic solving sort of things. Maybe it'd be useful to recognize potentially vulnerable pieces of code. Um, yeah, like in theory, yeah, you could match on things that you have learned are bad typical patterns and stuff like that, but that's... You're really reaching. You're like, you're really reaching there. And it, it would be so easy to write a paper that, that does that and gets good results because it's so easy to do that, but it wouldn't actually give universally good results. It's just... It's just... AI is not AI. AI is just metaprogramming. We, we've had this conversation before, but like... AI is not automation. AI just moves the burden from a programmer writing code to a mathematician tweaking models. You're not going to get good results by just taking a fucking random network and using it. It's going to suck. All of the improvements that are made in like AI and ML are literally like innovations and new designs in the shape of the networks and the layering and the filtering functions. That's not automated. It doesn't improve itself. It just, it would suck unless you put in the same effort to make a good fuzzer. Just write a good fucking fuzzer and call, call it like the, call it the fucking end. <laughs> what do you think about projects like Anger? I think they're not very practical, uh, but I think they, they do have fringe values. Um... I, I plan to do some uh, more symbolic stuff here soon. But it's... Eh, eh. It's a reach. I think, I think most of my issues are just the claims of, of making something that's greater than like a couple percent better. Because these improvements really aren't that crazy. Like with really anything that happens in kind of all of humanity. Like, improvements are very gradual and slow, uh, and it feels like every AI and ML paper I read uh, basically is, is convinced that they're literally changing the world and saving quadrillions of dollars. Um, yeah. Um, statistical learning is metaprogramming. It's, I, I don't mean metaprogramming as metaprogramming, I mean metaprogramming as meta as a prefix to programming, as a, as a, a different way of doing programming. Have you seen the stuff on Rust, terrible partial EQ derives? I have not. Um... Let's see. Did I rile up enough people? <laughs> Do you have any experience doing fault injection? I don't think so. Maybe. But not really. Um Oh, short circuit boolean operators are busted. Oh, the um the LVM optimization LLVM optimization issues. I mean, that's just LLVM being LLVM. Um, is fuzzing a monad? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, could be that could be really uh, up to your interpretations. <laughs> You could, yeah, you could make a fuzz monad. Um, good morning, good morning, Shattered Psycho. How's it going? Yo, what is this title? I, I almost expected to open a hot tub stream. We're just doing some code. We got a candle. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I hate terminology. I think people get wrapped too much about uh, 
terminology. That issue is nothing new. It's well known that LVM's optim optimizer is overfitted to the IR emitted by Clang. I mean, is the LVM's optimizer overfit to anything? <laughs> let's 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 be honest. We've uh we've had a we've had a quick look through some LVM generated code. <laughs> it's it's not great. It's really not great. I have no idea how that project is so fucking complex and so mediocre. Um Hot tub, hot tub stream on your OnlyFans when? You got you gotta find my secret OnlyFans first. Maybe I already do hot tub streams. Maybe I'm streaming from the hot tub right now on OnlyFans. Um Why do we even do static scheduling? What do you mean in that regard? Are you talking about uh are you talking about like Rust, like language-wise? I don't. I, I context switch away from that. Um, GCC almost always generates much better code than LVM. Yes, yeah. Yes, it does. It's it's kind of sad. It's it's really a shame that we don't have like a good optimize, like a good code base for an optimizer. GCC's code is kind of a heap of shit. Clang's code is basically the pretty much all of the worst parts of modern C++. It's pretty annoying. <laughs> Do you have more details about the OS? Uh, not really. Not the things that we haven't really discussed on, on stream. Um, and no, it is not open source. Don't worry. Uh, Cranelift will solve all problems. Um, God, I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. I I feel like Clang and LVM go for such, or I guess LVM goes for such fucking Hail Mary optimizations, and it really whiffs at some of the simple ones that like a thousand line of code IL optimizer would not have problems with. Um, I wouldn't mind a nice little simple uh, optimizer. Just need to go rust to LVM assembly to see <laughs> better assembly. God damn. I'm so hopeful for GCCRS. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of not. I don't know. I think, I think rust will never really have, uh, at least for... 10, 20 years, I don't think Rust will have a competing compiler project. I think everything will be basically integrated into the Rust Lang tree if they do get support for different backends. I'd rather Clang get better. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to me how many things Clang really struggles at. Um... At least that gets us Rust kernel modules. I mean, we can already do Rust kernel modules. I don't really get why people have problems doing Rust kernel modules. Or Rust anywhere. <laughs> yeah, but not in tree? I guess... I don't know. I just, I don't know. I feel like it's not too hard of a problem. Lib Fuzzer and the sanitizers and Clang are pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, they're really pushing the, the limits of those sorts of things and making plugins for Clang so much better than making GCC plugins. I doubt Linus will accept Rust code if it needs LVM to compile. I mean, yeah, that would, that would make sense. LVM's a fucking shit show. Um, I have, I have no idea why LVM is so fucking terrible for compiling. I mean, I do know why, because it's C++, and C++ uses templates, and templates have terrible uh, build times. 
Just C++ in general has terrible build times. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we probably won't see Rust in Tree for a, a hot minute. It's kind of a shame. I don't know. Linus always already opened a Rust driver dev. Yeah, he talked about that recently. Rust also has terrible build times. It's not that bad. It's not great. It's kind of up to your code. Same with C++. It's up to your code. Rust can have plenty fast build times. It's already in Linux next. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I know I read about that recently. I didn't know when it was going in. Um, where you, <laughs> What you're saying is we need to rewrite absolutely everything from the ground up? There we go. Incremental compilation helps so much. Yeah. The bad times are because the templates are optimizing for runtime performance. Just the trade-off they made. Yeah, I mean, templates in general are just really hard to optimize because you can't... You, you kind of can't build all of your code until all of the uses of the templates exist. So you could have some basic template that's dependency one of a hundred, but that code can't build until the hundredth dependency, uh, which actually uses that template, goes and recompiles it. It's, it's just templates in general are just really hard to, to do effectively. It's just a really hard problem. Um, so it's, it's a really hard problem. Like, <laughs> you're basically making copies of the, of the same code, you know, potentially thousands of times. So you're going to recompile the same shit thousands of times. So you're going to get a thousand X slowdown. So it's really on you to reduce the amount of templating that, that you do, uh, or you keep the template dependencies at a similar, uh, level or compile unit as what you're building. But um, when you use like a lot of third party dependencies and a lot of templates in those third party things, yeah, it's going to be a, going to be a fucking mess. Um, I think a lot of those things could be solved with kind of like a partial representation of templates and maybe they already do that, but I highly doubt it's as good as it could be. So, um, Rust also does not build parallel well. I, I don't I don't know why, but it, it's terrible at building in parallel. And I think a lot of that is due to the dependencies. You should be able to build the hundredth fun the hundredth dependency that depends on a templated function. You should be able to in like the first dependency, you should be able to build that in parallel. Like you shouldn't have to wait for a dependency to be fully built to start building the next thing. You should be able to start working on it, especially if it's templated. Um, Rust builds in parallel as much as it can. Yeah, and it doesn't build in parallel, like, at all. It struggles to use more than, like, four or eight cores. Basically, Rust only really parallelizes effectively across... across... Uh, non-dependent packages. So if you had a hundred different packages, it would build using a hundred cores quite well. But if you have like at only one given time, maybe four of those a hundred packages can be built individually, you're only going to really get four cores of use. It's really a, uh, it's really a shame. It's not a Rust language problem. It's a Rust compiler problem. Um, I see no reason why you can't have other cores going ahead and turning things into ASTs and turning things into like uh, like templated ILs where you, you basically do as much of the compilation as you possibly can without the dependencies and then you like jam in the dependencies as as if they're a template or something and not even just for templates. But I'm saying like go ahead and build things um, and then do fix-ups, right? Like, if, if you're building something and it's depending on a structure, um, you don't necessarily have to have that structure ready. You could generate some IL with fix-ups where you say, like, once you know the size of this structure, you fill in these four fields and then you finish the compilation. Um, there's a, there's a lot of things that you can do. 
Probably this would require us to expose complete types and traits before full compilation. Yeah. Um, but honestly, seriously, seriously, can you really not determine full structure and trait infl like information in like a microsecond per source file? Like, even if you have, like, a million line of code code base, how long does it really take you to fucking figure out those structures? A second? Like, you should be basically bottlenecking on reading from disk. In my opinion, if you have, like, an 8-core system, you should be bottlenecking on disk. Unless there's some, like, absurdly hard problem that I'm not aware of, I see no reason why you can't, you couldn't do that. Like... And that's that. That's where, like, I feel like the Rust compiler could probably be 10 to 20 times faster. C++ compilation time is not a C++ language problem as well, right? Yeah, it's definitely not. I mean, C++ compilation times are more of an issue with idiomatic C++ being very difficult to compile. Um... Idiomatic Rust, and uh, you can make really hard to compile things in any language that you want, uh, but C++ idiomatically does some really fucked up dependencies and really fucked up ordering of things, uh, inheritances, building VF tables, um, just the absurd use of templates. Like, Rust is honestly pretty light on templates. Like, idiomatic Rust does encourage you to use templates, but you don't really use templates for that much. Like, and the templates that you use are so fundamental that they can kind of be pre-optimized. And that's kind of the case in, in a lot of C++. But a lot of C++ also uses third-party templated libraries like Boost, and that can get really fucking messy. Russ says the Microsoft and Amazon uh, money backing now. Uh, shouldn't they throw money at the compiler team? No, I mean no one's gonna. No one gives a fuck about compile times. Nobody cares. Nobody cares if Rust took ten times longer to compile. As long as it works in a CI pipeline and gives you an email in like fifteen minutes for your ten thousand line of code code base, no one gives a fuck. Cause no one does anything. <laughs> No one does anything with their, like, time. No one cares about build times or efficiency. It's programming. Literally the entire world is running, like, a hundred to a thousand times fucking slower for almost every piece of software you use. No one gives a fuck about performance. No one, no one even remotely cares. Ten minute compile time for only 10k line of code? I mean, welcome to pretty much every programming project in the world that uses dependencies. <laughs> it's like, dude, no one gives a fuck. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, for a CI pipeline, this is pretty common. Yup, because it deletes everything, checks everything out, gra grabs all the dependencies, spends about five minutes in auto configure scripts, about 10 seconds actually compiling, two minutes doing a link with LTO, couple minutes downloading dependency packages and extracting them on their shitty file system that doesn't handle many files in a directory or just many files in general. <laughs> do you care about performance? I do care about performance. That's pretty much all I care about. <laughs> yeah. It's... it's it's pretty sad. It's why I don't like using dependencies. I mean, I have entire operating systems and bootloaders and ILs and JITs and arguably compilers. And I don't think I've ever really had a problem that takes more than like a second to accomplish. <laughs> like how long does it take my operating system to boot? Download a 4 gig Windows VM and then start 192 instances of the VM. 10 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Like, literally, people don't believe me. People genuinely don't believe me. 
Like, they literally think I'm embellishing or, like, making shit up when it's like, yeah, I can reset a VM a million times a second per core, and I can spin up 192 VMs in milliseconds. And they're like, that's not possible. It takes seconds to reset a VM. Yeah, when you use, like, fucking bash scripts to configure, like, Hyper-V, <laughs> like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> but in reality, things are just very slow. <laughs> And I feel that with almost everything I use, and it's painful. It's so painful. Ah, oh, it's so painful, dude. Why does it take my ID two minutes to open before I can start working? Because it probably, it probably sorts the same fucking vector and copies it a million times. Because that's what almost everyone does in C and C++, especially C++. Dude, people, like, literally, if you do, like, if you try to make a string in C++ and, like, output it to a file, the average developer, I'm not saying you guys who are, are in the mindset of performance because we're specifically talking about performance, but if you literally, like, told someone to, like, output a formatted string in C++, I can guarantee you they're gonna make, like, four or five copies of that string before it ends up in that file. It's just how that shit works, dude. <laughs> VS has to warm up, yeah. Like, why does, it, why does it take more than two seconds for Linux to boot? It's ridiculous. Why does it take, like, ten seconds for Windows to boot? It's ridiculous. Why does it take seconds to, like, open a fucking browser? It's ridiculous. Why does VS Code take a second to open? Why do you need splash screens on applications? Why can't you just open directly to the application? Why? Because all of these things, look at the, like, Grand Theft Auto thing. I think that was a fantastic example of what most code looks like, where it was like they could reduce the GTA Online start times from like three minutes to one minute by changing like a couple lines of code. That is the sort of shit, and I can guarantee you there's probably a one minute to 10 second thing, and there's probably a 10 second to one second thing. Like, this is just what I'm used to. Just fundamentally, things are that fucking slow. Like, they're not even remotely close to what they can be. And like, god damn, in C and C++, people do string length over and over and over and over. Like, the amount of embedded projects that I've audited as a security researcher, that the developers are so scared to put in a bounce check because they lose performance, yet they literally do like Sterlin of the same fucking string 10 times because they don't know how to pass a length into a function. It's unfucking real <laughs> <laughs> they shit out features as fast as possible, yeah. GTA dude got paid, yeah, that was pretty funny. Ultimately? Chat, are we ready for a hot take? Chat, are we ready for a hot take? We ready? No. Yay. People can't afford good programmers. Because there's like a thousand good programmers in the world. <laughs> and they all can go make like half a million dollars at Google. So a game programming company that's literally exploiting people who enjoy working on games to pay them the smallest amount of money they possibly can and working them in some of the shittiest conditions possible in, in programming, not in fucking general, but in programming... Game programmers get treated pretty much the worst out of almost any programmers, get paid almost the least, and a lot of that is just, like, people are willing to work for fucking pennies because they liked playing video games in high school. And you see that a lot. Like, a lot of people want to be game programmers. But, um, yeah. Pretty much everyone sucks at programming. Um... There, there's, a, there's a website that basically kind of, like, um, categorizes, like, a lot of the shitty code and, like, how bad people are at programming. Um, it's kind of this, like, funny gimmicky uh, website called Stack Overflow. Um, you can just kind of go there. I think, I, I think uh, when we live in a world 
And not to insult anyone who has this problem, because everyone has room to improve, and not everyone has the same background or focus or passions or interests. But when we live in a world where, like, the biggest complaint of people learning C or C++ in college is, like, pointers are hard, yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> like... When the, when the good programmer who, like, makes it to Google out of college is good because they understand how pointers work? Guys, we have room for improvement. <laughs> who is the best programmer in the world? There isn't one. And we probably don't know who it is if we had some objective way of measuring it because they're probably a hermit. <laughs> Embedded doesn't even use optimizations. Last time I tried to enable it, I heard, how are we going to debug it if we enable optimizations? Yep. Yep. And people don't want to release optimized builds because they test on, on debug builds and they can't certify the optimized build. And honestly, to their defense, they probably don't know how to write sound enough C or C++ that they can enable optimizations without getting rad radically different results because they're probably relying on undefined behavior that happens to work in their, in their unoptimized build. The amount of times I see that shit where you build something with O2 and now it no longer works, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Um, or they're stuck with a job they hate, shitting out code as fast as possible and hating themselves for too little money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people are into development for the paycheck. And I mean, that's, <laughs> honestly, there are probably more people who do programming, who actually enjoy programming than almost any other fucking career path because everyone is working to make money so they can do the things they actually enjoy. Um... It turns out people don't put much effort into things they don't give a fuck about. Um, <laughs> relying on UB. Yeah, overflowing an integer is UB. <laughs> the amount of C developers that I have done audits of their code on, and when I have said to them that they can't go out of bounds in an array, of an array, or like a malloc uh, structure, when we say array, we mean, like, any vector, um, the amount of times developers are like, yeah, it's not a problem, the compiler or the computer will stop it with a crash. Pretty much every develop embedded development team I've ever talked to. And you guys think that that's, like, a meme. It's, it's not. Literally, this is what most developers believe. Like, when you get out of your echo chamber of developers who willingly watch a fucking OS development stream on Twitch, when you get out of that fucking echo chamber of or sphere of, like, you're a fucking nerd, yeah, welcome to how people's code is. <laughs> I've worked with a lot of average programmers. And I've worked with a lot of average principal level programmers who are like the architects of like code that you have relied on for your life before it's not great it's not great when you remember that at the end of the day the difference of a principal engineer and a normal engineer at most companies in the world is whether or not you've been there for 10 years or whether or not you're 40 so yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people who are in roles because they've just... Because a clock has had a certain number of rotations. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was a once one radiology machine with a race condition that killed a couple of people. I mean, when you want to get really broad on the definitions, like, I'm pretty sure that was a pretty... I don't know what the story is, but I'm imagining that story was probably a pretty direct thing, like the radiology machine had a race condition that led to that problem. But in reality, if you want to talk about the amount of times that lives have been lost because computers have been offline, or the network is down, or we can't get in contact with this person, or 
911 wasn't reachable or the ambulance had a GPS problem and wasn't able to make it to your fucking place in time. Like, if you, if you make things broader to just, like, the most recent time that I was in a hospital, their system was down. They didn't know what to do. The touchscreen on their tablet where they entered things didn't fucking work. And literally all of them just complained about it, but no one acted like it was a big issue because it's so fucking normal for software to never fucking work. It's just fine. It's just whatever. <laughs> it's like, man, oh yeah, the, this tablet's really slow today. This system's not working well today. How many times have you heard that when you've had like something getting punched in or ringed up or a vital sign being read? It's how it goes, dude. It's how it goes, man. Um, you don't need to be a good programmer. It's all about making HR happy so you can get a job. There we go. I used to work for hospitals. Uh, they were used to going back to paper on a regular basis. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And, like, you can expand it further than that. What about... What about software that's, like, leading to logistical problems and getting hospitals spun up fast enough or reacting to an issue quick enough or getting generators to the right places or manufacturing or the, like, the logistics of getting things to the right place on time? Like... Uh, what do you find are the most common fundamentals missing from programmers? Thing you, things you saw when auditing... I mean, if, if we have to talk about technical things, if we don't have to talk about technical things, it's passion and it's giving a fuck. Um, if we want to talk about um, things that aren't technical but are directly job-related, it's shitty managers. And if we want to talk about things that are a little bit more technical and not corporate, it's shitty education. And if we want to talk about just technical things, it's kind of not a technical problem. It's kind of really shitty interview policies with really shitty managers, with really shitty motivations for maximizing money and doing things very cheaply. Like, managers suck, dude. Like, and I'm not really speaking to my managers because I work at companies that basically the managers are at the top 1% of management. The average manager is just a manager because they probably sucked at doing their technical role and they're like, fuck it, I guess I'll at least do like, I, I can go to meetings and organize things. And that is a shitty manager. Being a good manager is extremely important and also much more rare than good fucking developers. Good man, like... <sighs> Management is basically impossible. Being a good manager requires patience and empathy and understanding a little bit of the technical knowledge, being able to fight for the people that are working under you, knowing how to communicate, branching out, and finding new people to reach out to, um, it's a lot of fucking work. Management is not yelling at your employees because you did something that they're currently doing 10 years ago, and they should just fucking work and fuck them. It's really hard, dude. It's really hard. Um, I don't expect managers to be good because it's uh, a really hard role to fill. Aren't most managers psychopaths? No. Most managers are burnt out people who just happen to do the thing for 10 years and now they're the manager because they have seniority. And it has nothing to do... It's like... They can basically say, like, don't do it that way because I did it that way and it didn't work out well. That doesn't mean they're actually telling you a good way to do it. It just means that they're telling you something that historically, they're basically anecdotal, they're, they're anecdotal proxies. They basically share anecdotal quip, quips, 
quips? Quick quip? Short tidbits of information? I don't know why I'm reaching for that. They basically share, share small pieces of anecdotal, anecdotal information that is probably wrong, and they probably learned from someone who's sharing shitty anecdotal information to them. Um... There are, there are a certain amount of people who go into management who want to have big impacts and actually care about their employees, um, but they're really rare. And even good managers can be motivated by bonus season coming up and getting the next feature to ship and stuff like that. Stuff. Um... Yeah, technical problems are easy, people problems are not. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But all, all problems in humanity are pretty much people problems. Um, I don't ever want to be a manager, I just want to do technical stuff instead of managing people. People are annoying. I... I want to stay technical, but... And I will always stay technical... But, if you are very good technically, you should also dabble in a little bit of management. Because that is part of the problem. Um, I considered becoming a manager because I was so sick, of beaten, be, sick and beaten down in a job. Thankfully, found another development job that made me love dev again. That's awesome to hear. Hell yeah. Thank you everyone for all the follows. I know I don't have alerts up for follows, but I do see them as they come in. Um, I don't have any manager with technical backgrounds, which doesn't make it better. Yeah, like that, that is absurd to me. I don't think I've ever had a manager who didn't have a technical background. But once again, I'm working with some of the tippy-toppy managers in the world. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, a lot of people just aren't very introspective and don't really understand the value that they provide, uh, which is often zero or negative, negative. Um, and they just kind of go about their lives being happy with that, and power to them, but it doesn't really make the world a uh, effective place. The odds of, like, someone actually being a good manager and a good developer, basically zero. You need to win, like, two one in a hundred coin flips for that to happen. I have a manager with technical background, but the wrong technical background, which is also bad. Yeah, it can work out sometimes, but yeah, I could, I could see that being a problem at times. Uh, did you see this post about an APT breach analysis? No. I don't really follow APTs or breaches or any stuff like that. Not really interesting to me. Not saying it's not interesting. It's just not interesting to me. Um, some managers learn technical programming on Medium posts and think they can teach you how to code. I mean, yeah, you just got you just got to scrum and show up to your meetings and meet your deadlines and. Yeah, I mean, well, what's mind-boggling to me is I've never had a non-technical interview in my life, but there are a lot of a lot of companies who are hiring their programmers through like their HR department is like literally responsible for reading the resume and checking off checkboxes and hiring people. It, it's I think technical interviews are fucking garbage, and I'm talking about like Google, Facebook, Microsoft technical interviews being like absolute trash and not screening people well. And those are like considered the best interviews in the world. Uh, it's fucking sad to me how bad interviewing is. But, yeah. I don't know, dude. I need to get a snack of some sort. Maybe I'll get a Pop-Tart. I don't know what I'm feeling for a snack. I'm going to grab some sort of a snack. I'll be right back.
Um, I don't know. I think watching someone solve a programming problem may tell a lot about their thinking. It does, but a lot of uh, a lot of those interviews are checkboxes. It's not actually about having a good thought pattern. It's about telling the interviewer exactly what they want to hear. Um, how do you think technical interviews should be done? They should look at some of your existing works. They should have conversations with you about what you work on, what your passions are, what you're interested in. Figure out if you're a good fit, not a good programmer. Is Leet Code bad? Yeah, Leet Code's fucking garbage, dude. Absolute dog shit. Um, <clears throat> yo, yo, hey, light of hell, how's it going? Thank you so much for the four months of support. I've enjoyed uh, the little take-home interviews. Yeah, I think those are really good, actually. How do those 10K programmers get into Google if they don't do leet code? They don't. Because it's a fucking game. It's not actually about being a good programmer. It's about playing the game. I feel like the best way to see someone's thought process is having them explain a problem that they had solved. Yeah, that's often what I do. Um, not having them pull a random alga out of their ass? Yeah, I agree with that. Is there a good alternative to lead code? Yes, it's it's called being subjective. It's called not having a check mark and a, and a pass-fail of whether or not they implement it with the fucking same data structure that you would use. It's ridiculous. My work hired me off of one of my projects... Because my boss uses it? Yeah, I think stuff like that's great. I think your resume and what you've done should have a large impact on the interview process. Like, basically, my, my interviews are often just a quiz of your resume. If I ask you a question about something on your resume and you can't answer to it, not going well. Like, when you put down that you did something because someone on your team did something and contributed it and you, like... You, like, rang clang format on it? Yeah, not gonna go too well when I press into, like, what you actually fucking did for that and you weasel out of it. That's what everyone does, dude. Everyone's resumes just talks about, like, what the team did. I don't give a fuck. What did you do? <laughs> did he ever study leak code? No, I refuse to do leak code. And it's bitten me before. But I refuse to do that. In fact, I actively shit on leet code. The last time I had an interviewer tell me to do leet code, I basically told them to pound fucking sand. I told them not to waste my fucking time. Um. You refuse because you're afraid of not being able to solve the problems there? I refuse because I think it's a fucking game. I think it's irrelevant to the job, and I think it promotes hiring shitty developers. And I think it promotes people spray and praying at a hundred fucking jobs and hoping that one team happens to be desperate or losing a headcount that week and they get a fucking job and I have to work with them for the rest of my life. Fuck that. I hate it. It allows so many people to get jobs who should not have the, the roles that they have. It's ridiculous to me. You should never study for an interview. Now, like, why is that controversial? Why should you study for an interview? An interview should be a question 
about what you know and what you have learned and what you have done. It's not what you have fucking crammed in the past week. How is that going to even remotely help you be a good employee? <laughs> it should literally just be like going through your resume and having a conversation about what you've worked on in the past, what your contributions to the teams were, what sort of things you would like to see in a company, what you want to work on, what your skill level is, what your, what your, uh, what your interest is in working extra or little or doing research or doing management stuff or if you want to go down a certain career path or not or whether you want to get promoted quickly or what your pay requirements are. Anyone should be able to interview any time of the day. Yeah. Um... Am I seeing Gamosa turn into a manager? Nope. Because all of these opinions are controversial and managers would hate these opinions. <laughs> if I wanted to be a manager, I should be saying, hiring programmers is best done by having them make a simple program and then whether or not the program compiles without warnings, you can give them an A+, and then we hire them at a specific level. If they, if they build a program and it compiles with errors, don't issue them a job offer. If it does compile but it has warnings, they are an entry-level programmer. And if it builds without warnings, then we should hire them as senior. Why should I study for an interview? Good question. What I find is that almost always communication skills and presentation matter the same or even more than technical knowledge. I agree with that. Uh, and we have a better process to teach people how to present themselves better. Yeah. I think if you want to study for an interview, and once again, this is not advice for how to interview because these are not good ways to interview because the world hates this way of interviewing. But the way that I think you should study for an interview is looking over your resume, updating it, making sure you remember all of the things that are on it, preparing like code that you've worked on before, maybe open source projects that you can reference, or just get in the mindset, look in the mirror, build up your confidence, maybe come up with a couple lines, like actually re rehearse your interview, do like mock interviews. You're studying should be about your ability to communicate your skills, not about actually adding new skills to your portfolio. Um, that's how it should be. That's not how it is, so don't... I mean, that being said, it still is good advice. You should practice and build up that sort of confidence. Senior, what does that really mean? It's wall clock time in pretty much every situation. Not always the case, but almost every situation a senior developer is just a developer who has done nothing for six years. Um, I totally get you. In my case, I asked for X amount of money and was told, no, you can't make that much uh, with three years. And my answer was then... Uh, uh, well, then you can make the uh, amount you make if you judge professionals by the number of years they've been in the industry. Yeah, it's, yeah. Haha, <laughs> that's totally not me. Is that a, is that a haha or a, or an actual, that's yeah, not me. <laughs> I was hired a senior because of my project, actually. Yeah, it does happen and it's rare and that's awesome, but. Not easy, right? Definitely not easy. Um, for intern and new grad interviews, I think Leak Code can relate well to the academic material they've been studying for the past few years. Yeah, I mean, that's what Leak Code is. Leak Code is just making sure that the people that you hire suffer as much as you went through when you went through academia. It's really just a circle jerking competition of showing off all the data structures that you learned but have never used in your life. That's uh, that's that's what leak code is about. 
It's it's literally about asking like trick questions so that the interviewer can be like, ha, I know a better data structure than you. I'm smarter than you. <laughs> When in reality, they have no idea how to write fucking code. Or have no idea how computers work. That's what bites me in interviews. Is I try to, like, avoid allocations, because I know allocations are slow. Or I ask them, like, what's N? Like, you want me to make a data structure that sorts N? What is N? Is N a billion? Is N 10? Because I have two different implementations for those. And then they get really upset that I don't know how to just implement a generic sorting solution. People just don't know how to hire experienced developers. Experienced developers just get filtered out by leak code because they don't answer with the most basic, shittiest, idiomatic implementation. And they actually think about the ramifications of what they're doing. Competitive programming can be a sport and hobby. It can be. Um... If you don't solve it quickly, someone else probably did. Yep, because they just regurgitate the thing that they practiced writing yesterday. But they actually don't know how to write it. And it might have taken them like 48 hours to learn how to do it. And it might take you 15 minutes to learn how to do it. But they but they practice it the, last, the day before. So they're just a better employee in every way. Um... Aren't experienced developers filtered by leak code only on bad companies? Nope. Nope. Fang hires by leak code? Yeah, they do. Yeah, and they don't even look at your resume. Like, a lot of the Fang companies, like, aren't allowed to look at your resume because it will bias them and shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and Big O. God, God forbid you question Big O in an interview. All glory to Big O. It's, it's always better to do n log n when an operation is like sorting a fucking one meg list compared to doing like n when n is literally like a two cycle operation. Love it, dude. So good. Fuck Big O. I hate that. I hate that Big O is taught. The way it's taught. Did you get a leap code question in your interview at Microsoft? I did not. I got a pretty informal interview. The Microsoft interview was pretty soft, to be honest, but it was also a security interview. But I've gotten lead code uh, questions in pretty much all of my other interviews at, like, fan companies. X set S off? Yeah, I know. I have it. I just don't run it. Um... I never visited lead code once. Yeah, it's pretty awful. I don't like it. Why don't you mention freelancing? To be honest, I'm actually not a very big fan of freelancing. I think it's a very stressful way to live. And I think it leads to you having to be a self-starter and teach yourself almost everything. I pretty much never encourage freelancing. I think it's, uh, I don't like it. I don't like freelancing. Amazon told me to visit Lead Code. Yeah, they'll actively tell you, like, what interview problems to expect and stuff. How do I get hired if I'm a college dropout? No one gives a fuck. No, no one, no one cares if you're a college dropout. Like, that, uh, no, no one cares. If you're good enough, like, people will just look past that. If a company will not hire you based on your college status, you don't want to work for them anyways. The odds that that will come up in any of your interviews are so fucking small. It's pretty much never been asked in any of my interviews. Like, I, I don't think I've ever seen that come up. It's not something people even give a shit about. They'll only talk about it if it's already on your resume. But if it's not on your resume, it just they'll just either assume you have it or they just won't care. 
Um, solved it. Uh, Solved an interview question in C plus or C sharp, uh, and leveraged the built-in C sharp features. And it was denied because you didn't re-implement it. Yep. How many jobs as a security researcher have you held? I uh, mm, four, three. Have you ever done the Google interview? I have. How did you do on those lead code uh, interview questions? If you never pra practice them, I mean, I complete them. I just don't complete them as fast as they want. But yeah, I'll, I'll finish like the two leak code problems that they want me to do in an hour. Like no fucking problem. I'll just blast right through them. But I'll, I typically won't implement them in the ways that they want me to. Because I'll like use the stack instead of the heap. I won't treat allocations as free. I won't just sort something or call Sterlin. I'll care about security so I'll do bounds checks. And like all of these things are red flags. It's like this dude isn't going to turn out code. Fast enough. Any thoughts on that? Um, that you can share? Honestly, I, like... I, I don't really remember my Google interview, to be honest. Is Nine Monitors at home or are you at the office? I'm at home. I don't know. I just, I just don't really remember the interview. I've interviewed at Google twice. Once in high school and once uh, when I was out of high school. And, like, to me, it's just an interview. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. They're just, like, pretty standard sort of questions. Did you go for Project Zero? Yeah, I interviewed at Project Zero. Um, are you in hell? I am. That's what the fire is for. <laughs> For which positions? Only Project Zero. What happened with Project Zero? Uh, I don't know. I never got, I never really got an answer. So, I would, I would love to find out. Um, but I think they basically didn't want to hire people who are working, uh, didn't have like a public name. Who's the best at CTFs back in the days? Definitely Geohot. I was terrible at CTFs. Why are you in hell? Did you start using unsafe languages? Yeah, that's the. Those are the C monitors. Actually, those monitors. W one monitor is showing what it's like to write C code, and then the other monitor is showing the CPU activity of code. Just code. Just normal code that people write. Um. <laughs> but yeah, that's like I, I actually don't know what happened on my Project Zero interview Like It went really well And they said it went really well And they said that they would like to hire more people But they're looking for people with more of a public Like back I can't remember the email But it, it was literally like We've had a lot of great success hiring people With similar backgrounds to you But we're looking for, for someone who doesn't have a similar background to you It's like, okay Sick Sick and I sent like another email that's like, you can just tell me what, what went wrong. You don't have to lie to me. <laughs> you can be honest. But yeah, I, I, I genuinely don't, don't really know. But I think at this point, it would be fine. It would be easy. You're not famous enough. I don't think it's that. I think it's literally they didn't want to hire people who had a government background and didn't have a, a more public background. Because they hired a lot of government hackers. They hired a lot of people who like worked at NSA at some point in their past or government contractors. Um, and I think there's some um, ideological like concerns there. And I, I think that's genuinely it is like, I didn't have a CVE to my name. I didn't have other things, but like the interview went well and they said all of that went well. It was very confusing. They can't provide you with a direct answer because it would provide ammo for a lawsuit. Yeah, it's ridiculous, but then again, I was like, I literally had like two years of experience. <laughs> like, I, I can't say I expected too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you have any certs? No, I don't. But I don't know. I think PZ would be the best fit for me at this point, though. 
<laughs> Most of two years is 15. Two years at 18. Well, I interviewed at Google in high school when I was 17. And that's because a recruiter contacted me. And that was just weird. <laughs> like, that was just weird. It was for like a kernel dev sort of role, like Linux kernel dev sort of shit. Um, and I didn't get the job that I wanted, which was kernel dev, which honestly, I'm kind of happy that I didn't get a kernel dev job when I was 17. That'd be ridiculous. Um, but they, they like turned it into like an offer on like a different team that I could like grow from. But I was like, nah, I want to, I want to, I want to do kernel dev. I want to do low level dev. I don't want to do dev. Same with PZ, like, I got, I got an offer for other security teams, like, two other security teams, but I was like, nah, I don't really want to do that, so, technically, I've never been turned down from a job that I've interviewed at, I've never, never gotten rejected, I've gotten rejected from teams that I've wanted to work on, um, and I've gotten offers that I've turned down because the pay or the leveling was wrong, but I've never gotten, I've never failed an interview. Arguably, arguably the like Google at 17, but they did offer me the different, the different positions. So, uh, what is the structure of your security interviews? Less whiteboard coding and leak code. Like when I interview someone, I just talk with them. I have a conversation with them. I talk through their resume. I ask them questions. I talk them through like hypothetical scenarios and I let them control the branches. Like if they, if they interpret a question incorrectly, but they answer it with something interesting, I start going down that path. I, I have a pretty fluid interview process. Um, I kind of just go on a little adventure and it's kind of choose your own adventure. And if you answer like, you know, how would you, how would you exploit a hypothetical bug that overflows a buffer? If they start talking about the heap, then I'll start asking them about the heap. And if they start talking about ROP, then I'll start asking them about ROP. Uh, it's very, very fluid. How many people have you interviewed so far? Countless amounts of people, but honestly, not that many. Um, I, I don't have a normal sleep schedule, so interviewing is logistically pretty difficult. But when it comes up and is needed, I've, I've had no problems interviewing people. I don't know. Right, 30, 50? I have no fucking idea. A, a decent handful. You should do a you should do a fake interview with someone in chat one day. I was actually thinking about that when I was talking about this. I am very hard in inter I, I am not hard in interviews. I think unfortunately, most people will probably come out of my interviews thinking they went well because I will I will basically keep pushing a little deeper. And if they never take, if they never take the bait to go deeper, they never like really press into something, uh, then I just kind of talk with them. Except off didn't work. That's why I don't do it because it like, there's like another command. I always do the wrong command first. Um, why do they have you interviewing in the first place? Cause that's that's just how it goes. <laughs> Unless you mean because I'm like a, a hard ass on interviewing. The exotic software based MMU from Sushi World could potentially give a five two x or five x or hundred x increment on some targets. Uh, for example, fuzzing against a toy C parser. Um, Sushi Roll. Uh. Wasn't Sushi Roll my operating system for CPU research? I've done many software-based MMUs, and they shouldn't they shouldn't give an improvement to performance. They should always slow down performance. Exit DPMS. There we okay, we'll do that one. There we go. Um my last interview, I had to write code on paper. It was awful. Yeah, like, I, I don't like that model too much, to be honest. It's kind of annoying to me. Um, 
Has someone who ever came for an interview recognized you as the uh, Twitch legend, Re legend Russ guy? No, but most people do kind of know me when they interview. And sometimes it's annoying. Um, I've had like one person who I'm pretty sure intentionally like learn things that I do to try to impress me. And it come off as really fucking slimy. <laughs> like, it came off as really slimy. Like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. It's like, you clearly don't really understand these things, but you're trying to appeal to my emotions based on the things you know that I like to do. That was me. <laughs> This was, like, a long time ago, like, three or four years ago. It was, like, before I even had, like, a public image. Was he writing an OS for fuzzing that didn't use shared memory? Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But I'm pretty sure if someone does that in an interview, I'm either genuinely going to be impressed or they're going to be talking out of their ass so much. Because they're, they're like... If someone actually made an OS for fuzzing that didn't use shared memory, they'd be fucking ridiculous. They'd be so fucking insane. <laughs> It'd be so, like... First, I would just ask them if they've ever done something fucking practical with their background. If there's anything valuable we could get out of them as an employee. <laughs> Anything that gets you a job inside a technical company is a good start. These companies like to promote people within... What, what is this promotion thing you speak of? <laughs> what, what companies know how to promote? <laughs> I'd love to work at one of those. <laughs> oh, promotion! Oh, promotion! That's when you professionally use motion to get the fuck out and go to a company that will pay you. That's what it is. <laughs> ah, the professional motion of moving. <laughs> yeah, job hopping is the meta. Unfortunately, job hopping is the meta. At, at every, pretty much every time I've job hopped, I've doubled my pay. So, and I'm pretty sure I could do that again. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Places don't promote very well. Job hopping is the new distro hopping. <laughs> You'd either get a promotion or get actually paid, yeah. Or go to a consulting company. They make everyone senior. I could be a senior consultant? How often should you job hop? Uh, as often as your stock vests. <laughs> Sorry to my boss, who probably will hear that. He knows. He knows. Sorry, you know the solution. <laughs> I've told you the fix. <laughs> Uh, will I get old as a, old faster as a senior consultant? Um, yeah, yeah, that's how it works. I've never worked in a consultant company, and now, thankfully, I won't ever. I've seen things like that. Yeah, they can get pretty slimy at times. So, consulting can be a good way to go, but I, I just, I think in, I can't think of many situations where consulting is, is is best because you can make seven figures a year doing security or programming, right? You, you can make, and I don't mean you can make seven figures a year like making a company. You can make seven figures a year by being an exceptional developer, right? You have to be really good. You can't just fucking get that money for no reason. So the, the money cap of working at a 
company that provides benefits and pays you a salary. You don't have to write down hours. You've probably isolated by a manager. You probably don't have clients. You're probably not working with customers who don't give a fuck about you. You probably can consistently work on the same things and you're not bouncing around between like random people's code that you're working on. I just don't really see the reason to do like freelancer consultancy stuff. I just see more flexibility and freedom in a salary job. Because a salary job, you work 10 hours a week. You don't work 40 hours a week at a salary job. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> That's the trick. <laughs> <laughs> How many cores and time does it take you to find a browser RC bug? I don't know, one core for 15 minutes? <laughs> browser bugs are not, not particularly hard to find. <laughs> Can confirm, yeah. Finally someone says it. <laughs> Is the boss still there? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's be real, dude. We, we, we talk the truth here. Um... More like 10 hours of meetings and three hours of programming. Yeah, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that you're not fucking thinking about it all the time and coming up with designs and ideas and socializing with people and working on hobby projects and things in your free time and improving your skills and like, yeah. Especially during Corona workload, maybe seven hours. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no frameworks 10 times faster than anyone else. That's actually 100 hours a week for mere mortals. <laughs> I, I do have a slight ability to do a couple days of work and float on it for like a month. But that work often comes from ridiculous projects that I do in my free time that the company literally never has to pay and pay for her. So it works out kind of in the end. At, at this point, I like to say that I'm more on retainer for when a problem comes up that they need me for. Where it's like, I'm just kind of here to exist and do things to keep my brain motivated because they know that even when I do things that are completely unrelated to work, they'll be applicable to work because that's just kind of how it fucking goes with my life. And then, like, one year later, they'll, like, have some question of, like, hey, we really need to, like, do a birthday attack against this, like, custom, custom rolled, like, hand rolled, you know, crypto algorithm. It's like, ah, I have decent experience now with attacking crypto things and doing them at scale. I can do that for you. <laughs> it's like, why do you have that knowledge? It's like, I don't know. I just did it. <laughs> I just had a fun project. Um... Yeah, I'm pretty much always practicing and learning coding. Like, here's the thing. Would, would my work want me to stream writing this operating system? Probably not. Honestly, at this point, I could probably ask if I can just stream full time and they might say yes. <laughs> but I can guarantee you they'll be very happy in a year when I have ruled out some massive like ideas and performance blunders of certain implementations for resetting, fuzzing, snapshot fuzzing, performance, what things are easy to write, what has an easy API, like all of those things. And also interacting with chat and like <laughs> Interacting with chat does a couple things. A, it gives me a little bit of confidence. B, it builds up my name, which if my company wanted to use, is pretty good. If, if, if Microsoft wanted to make a blog and wanted me to write the blog and they let me write it more on my terms instead of the standard like legal process that you have to go through that makes all blogs suck that come out of Microsoft... If I got that flexibility, it would be a fucking amazing blog. And people would go ham about it. And we've had people who've interviewed at Microsoft because they've seen me on Twitch and they've seen my projects. So there is a 
there's an indirect impact that that you kind of have with this. But also, when I do like some open source projects, I, I get to kind of field the sorts of ways that people like things to be designed or not. Like when people question like, I don't think that's a good API. You should pass in a structure instead of 50 fields. Those sorts of things make me a better programmer when it comes to making tools for other people. As much as I don't really support my tools in the open source community, learning how to better support my tools or architect my code in a way that it's easier for other people to work with or extend or make APIs for, that shit is so valuable to making effective tools. So having an audience is really useful. Yeah, you have good management that understands that. Very rare scenario. I've, uh, I've experienced it before. If anyone finds that place, uh, do stay until your vests run out. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's, what's kind of crazy is that it is correct for them. Like, they get the most value out of it. I, I know that's, like, really fucking weird. Um, I've got, what, 10 years of, I mean, arguably 10 years of professional experience, probably 20 years of unprofessional experience that has kind of proven that my intuition and my mental path, like the way that I just go about learning things, is really valuable. And I think it would be really dangerous for a manager to assume that they could come up with a better path than what I could come up with. So, yes, at some times it's worth having a crunch time where I literally, like, I just do a thing because it needs to be done. And I, I have no problem doing that. Whenever a concrete task comes up, I nail it out of the park fucking immediately. No problem. Everyone's impressed. Everyone's happy. You know, ahead of schedule, has more features or things than they expect. I learn something or, like, I'm investigating, like, a, a bug that got reported to us and I audit the surface and find 10 other bugs in the same surface that probably would come in once that one gets patched so they keep getting money, shit like that. Um, but yeah, when there's not like a concrete thing that like really needs to be done this moment, I think it's best to kind of let me float around a little bit. Why do you stream so late? I'm going to sleep right now. I just stream whenever I feel like it. <laughs> Leeching off of chat's expertise. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I want to get paid for my expertise advice. All, all the backseat coding comments telling me how to write code. <laughs> Just asking why, uh, why won't you open source your tools? Because it's your hard work. Um, I've open sourced a lot of things. My tools are not very usable by other people and they're not intended to be. And I don't want to make them, uh, I don't want to make them usable for other people. Um, and open sourcing things is a job. It's work. Um, I, I like, I like having me time. I like being able to sit down and work on my own projects and do my own designs and not have to answer to anyone. And it's fucking amazing. It's beautiful. That's, that's how I do research. That's how I justify doing these, you know, crazy fucking things that I do. Right? Like... If I'm going to spend 80 hours a week fucking working, I'm going to do it on my own terms. Um, did you use Vekimu AVX 512 against JS engines? No, I never did. Honestly, I haven't done a JavaScript fuzzer in like five or six years. I, I just don't care about browsers too much. Just not really, I, I don't know why. Even even when I did browsers and like browsers were my bread and butter, I still just didn't like browsers that much. They're just not, they're not hard to work with. And to me, that's boring. I like things that fight me. I don't like things that I have source to. I don't like things that I can compile. I don't like things that I can attach a debugger to. I don't like things that I, like, understand how they work or, like, 
I don't like that. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. Um, amen to that. Had people find in my personal details to call me or email or whatever to complain about a bug in an open source linter I built? Yeah. I mean, I get PRs every once in a while and people get, people can get pushy, right? Like, here's the thing. What do you do when someone submits like a 500 line of code PR to your project? Do you just tell them to fuck off? Like, hey, I'm glad you spent probably two weeks working on this cool feature that is useful to you and probably to others, but I don't want it in my project. Sorry, closed. Like, you feel like a dick. You feel like a dick. Like, even if you... Even if you do nothing, I still get an email, I still see a GitHub notification, I still feel like a little bit of an asshole when I either close it or comment it, I'm probably gonna review it and try to find a way to make it fit in. It's fucking work. It's work. Hey, I reformatted your code, here's a 4K lock PR, yup. You just let them fork the project and link to theirs in the readme? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I always promote. But it's hard to promote that. I hate open sourcing my projects. People only create issues, never PRs. I get issues sometimes created for projects. A lot of them are relevant-ish. Some of them are not. Um, I think you should always think about what's best for the project. I mean, I'm thinking about what's best for myself. I fork and I don't link back. I have no problem with that. I don't care about that. My my open source code is very open. Um, I could watch your chatting streams for days. Yeah, people love the chatting. I, I don't know why. Just hit them with the PR's welcome and close the issues. No, PR's not welcome. <laughs> Think about what's best for yourself, yeah. None of my open source projects have a user base. <laughs> None of them have a user base. What's best for the project is nothing, because there is no project. It's just code that people can look at. <laughs> That's what it is. That's literally what it is. If that is not clear to people, all of my code, which is open source, is open source so people can look at it. It's not open source because it's meant for you to use it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, get ideas from it, maybe find a way to use it or build upon it and do stuff with it or learn from it. But goddamn, it's, it's not designed for you to use. If I, if I make something that is out there for people to use, it'll be very clear and it will be managed very differently. Read only code, no execute. Yeah, just get rid of all the make files. Hey, Gamozo, I just want to say that I hate callbacks. Uh, I will never work at companies with heavy publisher subscriber kind of APIs. It's a nightmare to debug. Yeah, I... I, uh, I don't know, man. Callbacks are often kind of mandatory. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I like me some callbacks. They can be really annoying. I don't like architecting callbacks, but the benefits of callbacks are often too good. Um, what was the first language you learned? Visual Basic. You need to publish your code with a leave me the fuck alone license. Like, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to push people away. I just don't want to welcome them in, you know? That's why I'm hesitant to open source my large projects that have large uh, traffic. Yeah. I just think callbacks shouldn't work with Rust ownership, but somehow they always do. Yeah. The biggest problem with callbacks is typically when you have callbacks, you need to have a generic opaque pointer. And opaque pointers in Rust mean any types. And any types in Rust can be kind of gross. I really wish you could turn an any type into a trait, but since you can't, it's kind of messy. You can, 
but it's messy. You have to, you have to like do, you have to, yeah. You have to make kind of like a rapper type sort of thing, but you, you can make it work. It's just kind of weird. Any works, but you can only turn an, you can't, you can only turn an any into a concrete type. So if the any could be a couple different things, it can be really messy. Because you need like an any that implements trait. And you can do it. You just have to make like another structure and another implementation. It's just a little gross. If you could directly turn an any into a trait, that would be fucking amazing. Um, very off-topic question. Can you describe, uh, what is the way you run games like WoW so successfully on your Linux setup? I just use Lutris and I just double-click WoW. <laughs> I do literally nothing. To be honest, every once in a while, I will, like, turn on Wine Debug and figure out why Wine doesn't work and make a patch to Wine. Um, but it's not super often. Callbacks also sometimes require closure captures, which do screw with the borrow checker. Yeah. And basically, when you use a lot of callbacks, you end up with kind of doing, like arc mutex any and you make these like super heavy types these super fucking heavy types i don't like it it makes me sad registering sets of callbacks uh callback functions is great it's async behavior if you don't like de uh uh you don't like if debugging them is hard yeah i i don't like threads so i like callbacks because callbacks are one of the best solutions to not needing threads, right? Like in my fuzzer, right? You, if you register a breakpoint, what am I going to do when you hit a breakpoint? I literally can't do anything until you respond to the breakpoint. So I could technically put it in an event queue and then like spin on that thread until you finished the event. But now we've paid like an IPC syscall transitional cost to do something that could be basically zero, zero cost, just a function call. Um, like a lot of situations, there's just blocking things that you need to do. And without callbacks, there's not a great model to doing them. Um, should wine be renamed as wine wines? Wine, oh, wine issues be renamed as wine wines. Maybe. <laughs> I'm still hurting uh, from using raw syscalls to spawn threads in Rust. What are you doing with raw, raw syscalls to spawn threads? Oh, you mean like way back in the day? Um... I'm currently coding a distributed pub subsystem on C++ as a personal project. Um, right now, would it be better or easier to write it in Rust instead? It wouldn't be easier, but it would probably be better. <laughs> it wouldn't be easier, but it'd probably be better. Um, do it in whatever language you want to do it in. Yeah. Yeah. If, it depends on your adoption and what kind of developers you want to work on it with you and all those sorts of things. But if it's for personal use, C. C++ is terrible for FFI. Like C, Rust are so much better to work with than C++ because you can't do FFI into C++. You have to make wrappers on everything and it's so stupid. It's so annoying. Like look at doing like Clang plugin dev in C. You basically can't do anything. You can call like 10 different functions. And other than that, you can't do shit. You have to like write it all in C++. C++ is just kind of a toxic ecosystem where it kind of pollutes everything. Where you kind of have to do everything in C++ or nothing works. Playing around with Rust without standard and libc. It's apparently pretty hard to tell Rust to not touch the stack in debug builds. You, you mean like not use the stack at all or not do stack probes? Because not using the stack at all would be advanced. Why, why did my... Why did my... 
Oh, my battery died. Be right back. Damn it. Uh, we'll just we'll just write some code for a bit. I think the camera will need to get a little bit of a charge before it runs off of USB-C. So we'll just do some code. Sad day. Um, yeah. I think, like, honestly, there's a chance that it can't, Basically, the camera can operate off of USB-C, but the battery needs to be plugged in. And I think what it's doing is it's like draining the battery at like 1% per hour. So I probably need to get a little bit of a charge on it before I can turn it on. Because I don't think... I don't think it can charge while recording while using USB-C. So basically, I think the battery just needs like a bootstrapping charge in it. Sad day. It probably is like, it's just not a fast charger for USB-C. And it doesn't have a switch over to like running directly off USB-C. Bare bones x86 Linux. Ooh. Okay. I see what you did here. I've done this a lot. Yeah, I've got pretty, pretty comparable things to this. Basically no standard, but you get Alec and, and shit. Yeah, I, I like this stuff quite a bit. I, I've got a couple projects. This, I often will build things like this for uh, fuzzing. Then I get to cut out libc. I like not having libc. I fucking hate libc. I, I think it's annoying and stupid and does dumb things. <laughs> We're romantic. All right. Um. Well, I guess... We just got to start coding, unfortunately. IO stream? IO stream's just awful. I don't know what the IO stream is relevant to, but IO stream is just fucking garbage. <laughs> Suck to get Rust to not use the stack while a thread is freeing its own thread. Oh yeah, you'd have to do that in assembly. Include iStream adds five seconds to compile time. I mean, who... The C++ fucking... The C++ formatting API is so fucking bad. Like, imagine having printf, and then you come out... You come up with the fucking C++ stream and formatting API. Like, it's, it's basically you just do something intentionally that's different just to make it different. Holy shit, it's so bad, dude. Just use just use printf in your fucking <laughs> C plus plus. I O stream so bad. Like I I, I want to print a hexadecimal representation of an integer. Well, that's gonna be a fucking hundred character line of code. Jesus. They're adding a better formatter soon. Cool. Can't wait for that to be supported by two versions of libc with slightly different format strings. <laughs> Can't wait, dude. Can't wait. <laughs> oh, man. C25. Can't wait for that to be universally supported by one of four major C compilers by the year 2035. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, dude. Oh my god, C++ is... It's just like a hint, dude. It's just like, yeah, I guess we could implement this at some point. It's like everyone has an impartial imp implementation of every fucking standard. It's like C++ 13 still isn't really well supported. Uh... 
If they add it, now we'll only see it at uh, legacy code bases when we have grandsons, yeah. Huh. We'll just switch everything over to Rust and it'll be fine. All right, chat, so what we need to do is we need to uh, improve our code. So we're gonna, we're gonna do an audit of our code and we're gonna read through every line of code like we did last time. Uh, and we're gonna look for things that, so this is kind of how I start off my day programming if you guys haven't fucking picked up on that yet. Um, we're just gonna read through basically every line of code in our project and then we're gonna see if anything sucks and if anything sucks, then we're gonna fix it. Um, that's what we're gonna do. Same thing we did last time. Uh, just kind of how we go. This is Vim. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see if the camera has enough, enough in it. Nah. I am very curious. It's at like one percent battery. This will be a good test to see if the battery can stay. I guess I have done like 16 hour streams and like 20 hour time lapses. So I don't think it drains the battery. So the question is, will it charge while in this mode? Um, I actually can't see what the battery level is, but I am curious if it will, uh, <laughs> I'm curious if it will charge. But it looks like it, it's, it's probably bootstrapped enough. Um, <laughs> Stru stuff has to be like a uh, hundred years old by now. How much longer can this go on? <laughs> he's an ancient sage looking. He's got that Unix beard. <laughs> stir, 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 out, stir up. So what, it, what is that? So it's, it's stir, stir where you're looking for overflow unsigned characters by looking at an unsigned pointer? Is that is that what that function is? <laughs> stir, stir, stir soup. Stirry soup. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So, uh... Panic handler. This looks good. It, it 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 just handles panics. Honestly, I think this should just be one line. I think there we go. I think that's a big improvement. Chat. I think I'm happy with that. I think we made good progress today. Um, thanks everyone for uh, coming in to do that coding. Uh, we've really improved the code quality here. We'll make a PR for this. Um, yeah, work done. There we go. <laughs> I understood this. What progress? There you go. It's more. It's an accessible change. All right, we have the EFI entry point. We've got two strongly typed <coughs> parameters in here, which is great. We return a strongly typed EFI status code. We register the system table. We initialize ACPI. And all of this code is going to change here in a minute. Get the memory map. And then this is just test code. Oh, we can fix this right here. There you go. And then check stack. We need that in ARM. Okay, so let's... Uh, Let's build this, and then we'll uh, we'll run it on the ARM dev board just because I can literally hit the reboot button with my hand. It's it's like it's like the dev the dev board's right here, and I can just I can just plug it in, and then I can just you can, you guys can't see it. And I, there's just a button that does a reboot, and there we go. Okay, so that makes that really easy. Um, <laughs> tutorials. <laughs> Just run Rust format. No! I hate formatting tools. I will use them when I read poorly formatted code, but goddamn are they worse than well formatted code. All right, uh, okay. Go ahead and find a val valid serial device. That's a, that's a questionable error message. We're gonna improve that. Let's, uh, let's start out the sheet of notes. There we go. We need a Rust format with vertical alignment. Yes, we do. Then maybe I would use it. But until then, fuck it. All right. 
So what are the things that we have seen in the code so far that we need to change? Well, ACPI, damn it, uh, ACPI must return parsed data. Okay, so I have ACPI return parsed data. Um, we're going to fix uh, add stale data support to the memory map. Okay, um, and then what else do we need to improve here? Um, we're going to uh, parse more SPCR information. Okay, so we already have three things to do and we've looked at one file. Um, all right, so let's just go down the list. Let's, uh, let's not start with that. Let's start with core requirements. This holds the libcore basic requirements for things like libc routines. Yep, mem copy, rep move sb, size n, destination to source. All of those are clobbers. Uh, we could we could say this is no stack. Um. Yeah, no stack is only about subtracting from the stack, not writing to the stack, so that's fine. Okay. What else can I do? Rust inline assembly. Doop doop doop. Standard asm, unstable book. Options. It's not pure, it's not no mem. It does not push any data onto the stack. Um, that should be fine. What other options do we have? There's more. Pure read only, no mem, preserves flags. This does not. Uh, it's not no return, it's, it is no stack. Okay, sweet, I think that's good. All right, look at that, we made an improvement. Uh, Lipsy mem copy in Rust, parameters, uh, returns pointer to dest. And this is this is mem copy again. Get the dest and the source offsets. They're just pointers. We read one and we write it to the other and we go through a loop. That's it. Nice. Okay, so that code looks good. Do you have any recommend recommended things I should look at before writing a hypervisor? Should I try to jump straight in? There's really no good references for it. You kind of just have to. Um, you kind of just have to read the Intel or ARM or AMD manual to figure out how to do it. All right, so mem move. Check if there's overlap with the source coming prior to the dest. Even if there is overlap, if the destination is earlier in memory than the source, we can just copy forwards. Okay, so if the dest starts after the source and the source ends before the dest starts, that's correct. Compute the overhang, which is this distance here, or uh, this distance here. If it's less than 64, if it's quite small, then we just do a naive uh, copy. Otherwise, copy, uh, basically call mem copy of the chunks, the overhang size. And then check if we copied everything. All right. That looks good. 
They can probably be in laid out. Technically, it doesn't matter just because it's the same register. Laid out only matters if it's uh, changing to a different register. Um, mem set, we can do the same thing here. Uh, options, no stack. Is it no under stack? I think it is. No, it's just no stack. Yeah. Um, mem set, reps those B in EAX. This is the pizza code? It is the pizza code. Yeah, dude. This, this is such a good mem move. It's such a good mem move. Our mem copy is fantastic. This mem copy is good. I mean, technically, technically, we could optimize this and we'll maybe do that on our arm board. And that brings back memories. Yeah, the pizza signal. This code was really hard to write. But, well, N. Yeah, you spend so much time optimizing it. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty naive. It's not even as optimized as it could be. What's the pizza code? This is a... Uh, we basically, we did a stream where we wrote these functions and uh, we put a lot of effort into making these like really fast mem move implementations. I don't know why I like playing with this fan on this arm board so much, but it's kind of, it's kind of fun. Um, libc memset implementation in Rust. Yep, just rep stows B. That is a U32. That's no stack. Mem set. This is the naive implementation. And then mem compare. And we could speed up those. Are they faster than the compiler built ins? Oh, yeah. <laughs> By quite a bit. Probably depends on your hardware, but um, yeah. Like our, our mem copy definitely is. And then this mem move is a really good mem move. We could re-benchmark those and stuff in a minute, to be honest. Return dest, and then here, just copy forwards. And that's the fall through. The emote is based off of the GNU plot. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's literally a graph <laughs> that we drew. That we drew on. Okay, this looks good. Everything looks commented quite well. Um, EFI. Mm, we're not going to do that one yet. That's a big one. MM.RS. Memory management. I think that's fine. Uh, let's, do a, let's do a cargo doc quick. And we're going to see if everything's documented. Main bootloader entry for Fuzz OS. A very lightweight ACPI implementation. Libcore. Basic things. Okay, check stack. Oh yeah, someone told us how to do the stack checking thing. Had to go to sleep. Lame. Lame. On x86, compiler built-ins uses raw assembly. Since when? This must be recent. Stack probes kind none? Yeah, I think that's what I want to do. Well, we can just grab these then. The compiler built-ins. Memory. Arm. Yeah, 
AABI mem copy. Let's see what their mem implementation was. Wasn't it like really slow before? It does preserve flags. Oh, I think move does. Mem move. Yeah, so it looks like their mem move is not optimized. It's hard to say. They basically just copy forwards or backwards. And we determined that that was much worse. File was created October 2020. Yeah. Okay. Uh, eventually, we'll probably switch to that. But we're going to keep our own for now. All right. Everything here. Nice. We basically, what we're looking for is we're making sure all the documentation is up to date. We're not really reading it. We're just making sure it's present because all of these are copy pasted. Oh, these are great, dude. These are great. Look at that. Look at that. Will FuzzOS work on Ryzen CPUs? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's, it's literally running on ARM right here. This is on ARM. <laughs> it's like a completely different architecture. No problem. Don't give a shit, dude. Um, okay. Those look good. Corex. Good. I actually really like this. I, I want to do more... Okay, chat. Here, here's where, here's where chat helps. Um, how do you like to format these, where you have uh, like a description and then the inputs and the returns? How do you like to do this? Do you like this? Should I use like a table instead? Should I make like a a table or something? I think we're going to go through and we're going to document every function to document the parameters like this. It's fine how it is. This is good. This is... I don't want good. I want the best thing possible. This looks good. Oh my god. Fucking cringe, guys. Um... You don't, you don't, you don't get upset that these things aren't aligned, that these aren't vertically aligned. That doesn't drive you absolutely fucking nuts. I would like to see the table variant before I decide. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, we'll do markdown format. We'll, we'll just see if there's, there's more formatting we can do. Okay, so currently what we did for those is we have, so this is a header, or a heading, a heading level one, and then we use bullet points. Okay. Oh, I didn't know there was an alternate syntax. I do like this, though. I didn't see the vertical alignment. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Do this. Don't do this. Yep, yeah, okay. Paragraphs. Line breaks. Emphasis. Italics. Block quotes. Nested block quotes. Okay, okay with other elements, okay. Chat.
Um, ordered lists. I don't like ordered lists. Okay, and then you do indents. Markdown tables are ugly in source. They're not too bad. Plus. Indented, okay. No safety docs. <laughs> Depends if you space out the columns. Yeah, exactly. It's on you to format it correctly. That's a really good looking Linux mascot. Is that an SVG? Aw. It's a good looking Linux mascot. I like that one. Escaping Bactics. Okay, you, t you use two of them. Code blocks. Horizontal rules. I always use dashes, and they're the same. Okay. Yep, that's how I do. Formatting links. Okay. Where are the tables? Where are the tables? Where's the ta tables? Oh, that's basic syntax. Oh, we got to go and do advanced syntax. Extended syntax. Let's go. We're going in. We're going in, chat. Okay, tables. You can align text. Oh, that's hot. Heading IDs? Okay, cool. I didn't know you could do heading IDs. Definition lists. You can do a task list like that? I didn't know you could do that. I mean, I guess I did. These are, these are very advanced. I like it. All right, let's see if we can do a table. Um, can I do it without s syntax description? Can I do it without headers? All of them show with headers. Depends on the parser. Well, we're gonna. S and does it? It doesn't have to be three, does it? Yeah, it, you can extend the whole way. Honestly, I might do like three here. Okay, uh, arguments. Hmm. We're going to try this. Did we do it on mem? No, we did it on mem copy. Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Nope. Nope. Do you think I preformat this? Should add the ending one. Should I do that to everything? Doesn't change anything. 
Do I need the ending thing? The ending one's just gonna make it harder to do multi-line shit. Cause I wanna do like, moose, right? And that should just be a space. Oh no. Uh-oh. 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 Easy align? Yeah, too much work. Hmm. Really? This might this might be dead if we can't do this multi-line. That's a shame. Yes, it is a shame. Um, no, that's not what I want. No, that's not what I want. Re. Is this not possible? Does no one do this? How has no one done this before? The technology just isn't there yet. Unless it's because I don't have the ends on them. No. Mamma mia. Ha. <sighs> Why can't you do this? If you do something, it should work. I mean, that's just gonna make another, uh, another row. Yeah, we might not be doing tables. Really? And we tried the backs. We tried to escape it. We tried. We tried that. 
And that that literally emits one. Let's see what this does. Yep. I mean, maybe maybe it's the situation where you need four of them. The classic. Nope. Oh. Boo! What else can we do? Where is the dictionary thing? You can write HTML in Rust doc. Mm. Definitionalist. So that's what I was thinking. Should we use a definition list? Not supported, yeah. I think the lists have just been the best ones. I mean, I could I could do headings. Yikes. Too much, too much. That's going to look like shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we can beat this, can we? Ah, I just wish that was a line, dude. Re. This is the best. I know, I hate it though. It's not bad, it's not bad. It's not terrible. What does Rust use? Oh, they don't do it like that. I think some of the things they do. I'm just clicking on things, trying to get trying to get an example. So I, li I like this. I like this. It's verbose, but I like it. Um... Thoughts about putting an extra a padding line there such that they don't get smushed? I think I like the padding line. I think I think the padding line is an improvement. Gets rid of some of the smush.
Because that, yeah, I, I like the padding line quite a bit, to be honest. It makes it a lot more readable, in my opinion. I, th I think we did it. I think we improved it. Thank you, Pookie. Number of bytes to compare. Original. Look at, look at these improvements. Parameters, returns. Oh, look at this code quality. Have we ever written better code than this? Decided to look through the MD parse Rust parser Rustock uses. There are no comments in it. Yikes! Yikes, dude. That's pretty cringe. All right, I got to change up my music. Undocumented code in my Rust? Um, let's do, let's put libcore in here in backticks. Look at this. Look how good this looks now. Look at this. This is, this is, this is amazing right here. I don't understand how you can call this dark. This is, this is some pretty light dark. And like, you have a white text box? Like, fuck off with that shit. This is so much better. This is so much better. Preferred dark theme, this. Preferred light theme, this. <laughs> Deny missing docs? Oh, baby, you can do that? Oh. What's this code share? What is this? Why are you trying to share code with me? I don't I don't see any code. <laughs> Dot dot. Are you serious right now? Are you serious right now? Where the fuck was that? Mem copy. Oh.
I'm gonna copy your example. I'm skep I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. Mmm. Mmm. Not not looking too good for you, Memphis. Not looking too good. Not looking too good. <laughs> Ban if it doesn't work. Chat, you're all toxic today. Mm. I don't know. I'm not convinced it's possible. I thought the dot dot was the trick, and I got jabated. Garbage. Garbage. We had the lead code today. There we go. Sad day. Sad day. All right. So um, we're gonna go and look at. Oh yeah, we were gonna. Th we were thinking about this. We were thinking about this, weren't we? Why is memcopy implemented as move SB and not move SD? Um, because it's faster. There's no reason to do um. There's no reason to do move SD on modern Intel processors. That would just require you to execute it twice. You'd have to call move SD and then move SB the remainder. Privates. If deny is too radical, you can warn. I don't think deny is too radical. I don't think deny is too radical. And then I need to do links more. Use the, how does that work? Oh, I see. Th that's a link, but it shows up in that format. Okay. Uses this spec. Okay, okay. What's forbid versus deny? Table. You can't allow forbidden stuff. Oh. oh, that's a good one. Is it me or do I see nothing about tables here? Oh, tables are an extension. I see. GitHub tables. Okay, okay, okay. Um,
I'm not seeing any way to do it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see anything about it. Footnotes. I don't use footnotes. Tables. Oh, there it is. Multiple paragraphs aren't inlines. Yeah. Our exhaust is this. What to include? So I think there's a couple things that I need to improve in my documentation. I need to use more links. I never really use links. I always backtick things. Thoughts, chat? Thoughts? Do we go for it, chat? Can we handle it? Oh, baby! Woo! Easy, dude. Easy. I don't know why chat doubted me so much. The first fully documented OS. I see what you meant with romantic. <laughs> Can you do a block comment? Oh, I can do this. I don't need to do that shit. Okay, okay. All right, uh, libcore. I think I can reference core, can't I? Can I do this? <laughs> big, big, big. Why does that link to rustling docs? Hmm. Would be better if it linked to local docs, yeah.
Hmm. Uh, component add doc. Yeah, I have Rust docs installed. Uh, command line arguments. Maybe it's not an unstable. Default theme, ooh. I don't see anything for it. I'm kind of surprised. I tried to go and sleep and failed. What did I miss? We're doing we're writing documentation. <laughs> Issues. Closing in favor of Z Rustock map. Pass external documentation mappings to Rustock. So that links to dependencies will use those external sites. Okay. All right, it's whip. It's whip. Unstable, yeah. Local means use the Rusty sysroot. Creates links to nightly. To modify this, use this setting. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I gotta do... Why do I have two building terminals? Oh, because I had code open here. Um, I have to pass in these extra arguments. No depths. What's no depths? Home pleb rust up. Okay, that's an improvement. Don't build docs for all the crates, for all your crate depths. See, that's what's interesting to me because core is a core is built because I'm using build standard. So I was kind of expecting it would build the documentation and then it would be. I would be looking at the docs. Um, um, where the fuck are the docs? Uh, I guess this is the default doc. Yeah, because this is going to build the docs. Will it not? 
Maybe it won't. Core standard is special. Can I override that then? Raw stock, grep i core, grep i standard. Yeah, I see nothing about standard. I don't see anything about that. Copy core files and turn on no core. Yeah, it's interesting because I do build standard and I guess that that's just special treatment. Okay. Well, we do want to uh, build depths. We don't need to put this for all of our depths, do we? Like when we make a dependency, are we gonna have to do that? Or will it inherit it from this? We'll see. But that's nice, now we got core. So it's the core basic requirements. Okay, mem compare, and then no links in here. No links in here. No links in here. No links in here. Okay. Chat, did we make an improvement? Oh. Oh, yeah. Holds the core. Yeah, and we can click on that. Nice. Nice. Okay, let's look at print. To implement right on. And we can do this. And this holds the print. Can I do that for macros? I don't know if I can. Print! Hey, look at that! Mamma mia! Should I just do this? Print bang? It doesn't really make a difference, but I think this makes more sense because a macro isn't necessarily, uh, doesn't necessarily use parens. Um... Okay, so core, that's a link. Handles the print macro, and we wanna backtick this. Honestly, I can put it in these. I think that's best. Because it will just know to ignore those. Oh, it doesn't render them. Okay. Yes! So core. Print, and that goes to the correct print macro. Um, all right, let's look at print. Files handles the print macro, which allows for displaying information to the Eufy standard out console. Um, or uh, via the Eufy API, or to the serial port specified by the ACPI SPSR, SPCR table. Yep, SPCR. Okay. <laughs> the left fire is for C unsafe and the right fire is for a CPU running any code. Oh my god, dude. Love it. Alright, uh, write a string. And we should get comments for that. Because write has that, right? Write will go to this. Oh, and we can click on write! Yes! Yes! Oh, that's so good! And that will go brrrp! And this is what we implemented for it. Oh, big dude. You gotta love when someone forgets their own jokes and laughs at them. Okay, so this is gonna be a self-referential one. Good. Good. Art. Art. That is standard IO. It's not. It's core format, right? For this one. 
All right, core format right. Okay, so we treat the screenwriter as a write. We call write format on it, pass in screenwriter, and then we format. Okay, and this is, we need to change this. Uh, I'm going to say do something. Do something about, do something about serial device global. Okay. Got to do something about that. We'll come back to this when we do that. Vim source main print mm. I think that's fine. Um, source serial. Oh, uh, we could do something about serial device. No, we're not going to do something about serial device yet. Uh, let's check documentation right now. A basic 16550 serial driver. Um, global device. Generic address structure parsed out from ACPI tables. Initialize the serial port to 105201. And we don't actually do that, but we will in a bit. We'll improve this. Create the device. Drain all the bytes pending. Set up the serial device. And then OK. Read a byte from the serial port. Do I want to do, do I want to do the argument documentation stuff? We're passing gas. Uh, core. So what we do is we say parameters. Wow, nice. Parameters, think. Uh, device. This is a generic address structure which was parsed from the SPCR uh, ACPI table. Look at that. That's an improvement right there. Good. Okay. Um, I don't think we need to document self. I think self is pointless to document, right? We don't need to we don't need to say self is self is pointless. Okay. Parameters. Um byte. The byte to write to the serial device. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, you like verbose documentation? Because we got verbose documentation. The slice of bytes to write to the uh, serial device. Um, I don't know if we want periods or not. I think we'll do periods if and only if we have multiple sentences. Verbose docs are my jam? Fuck yeah, dude. So print, center print macro. Uh, I don't think I uh, need to document this more. I mean, maybe I could. How is doc not failing on that? Because we don't we don't document that. We don't document the check stack. Hmm, thinking, colon? Do I need to turn something on to get that functionality? I don't know why, hmm.
why... Why is it not mad? Oh, is it because it's not pub? Yep. Um... There's like an all option or something. Document private items. Okay, so it builds right now, and then we'll do... No. Let's just try no default, see what we get. No defaults. That's... That's a thing. What? 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 Oh. Cargo dock. Um, document private items is here. Wait a minute. Yeah, check snack, huh? I mean, it was documenting it regardless. I guess private items probably only affects dependencies, but why is Clippy missing docs and private items? Hmm. No. Only with Clippy. Well, I'm not using Clippy. Who uses Clippy? It's just gonna yell at me about dumb shit. Yeah, I have an extern. What the fuck? Added it to 1.48. But it's not a thing. It's not in. It doesn't work, right? We have an extern. Fixes this. Oh, there's a good clippy.
hub type. Oh, this is for externs like that. Damn, why is that in Clippy? Why is that not in Rust itself? That's sad. Redundant closure. Yeah, let's see what let's let's see how much Clippy's complaining about. See, this shit's annoying. Fuck off, Clippy. Fuck off, Clippy. I think that's the only thing that I really don't like about, um, yeah, that can be an and. See, I don't like this either, right? Th this is annoying to me as well. Arguably this one I would switch, but like, let's look at EFI. Right? What do you think looks better? That or this? Like, I, I like being explicit. Like, it's just weird. Because then, like, imagine I had another thing. Right? And now it's like, end is just in the middle of fucking nowhere versus, like, this, where it's, like, very obvious. I don't I don't like just having end. I only do explicit for alignments. If 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 it was just start end, I would just do that. But since I have one that is not exactly start, I like being explicit on the other ones. That's kind of my view. But yeah, we can tell it to fuck off about print line, because that's stupid. Um, private type in that, really? Oh, it's not allowed because it's an enum. Makes sense, because we can construct it. Yeah, why was that allowed? <laughs> what? Oh, that's new. Okay, okay, Clippy, okay. Okay, Clippy. I fuck with that. So, yeah, we'll we'll use Clippy. Should I say Rust doc? Should I do that? Is that more correct? Is it two colons? I feel like I saw that syntax, didn't I? Oh, okay, no. Uh, 
Um, was that missing docs from private functions or some some shit? Then here we have to do Clippy. Okay. Hey, hey, there we go. Some even nicer stuff in Clippy Pedantic. It's like everything. Okay, that's big, dude. Um, let's see. Now I gotta find the fucking thing I gotta do for this. Where is it? Stack. Mm hmm stack probes kind none okay think I can get rid of check stack now I guess check stack is cookies isn't it no hey let's fucking go Let's fucking go! This is very nice and aggro. That's what I like to see! Good! Good, 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 good. There's our to-do. Yeah, exactly. This is great. 217. Okay. Okay. Uh, this. Redundant field names, fixed, unreachable pattern. That was a real one. That was an ace ACP. Seven thirteen. APIC unused. Uh, we can add these prints back in temporarily. Um, 53. MM doesn't need to be mutable. It does if we want to allocate, but we're not allocating right now, so that's fine. Ret doesn't need to be mutable in... That was serial. Yeah. Access size... 6.2, access size, fizz adder, IO adder, access size, okay, out of memory on range sets, source range sets, That's because we don't call allocate anywhere. Yeah, a lot of these can get really tough because these things aren't pub. Don't use remove, allocate prefer. K 
contains, which is used inside. We have like a bunch of nested things in here. Uh, range set is probably going to get moved into a library anyway, so we don't really have to worry about it. Um, range start and end, pubs. Range set is pub, new, entries, insert, remove, sum, allocate, prefer. Okay, uh, this looks good. Range set is going to be going to a library in a minute here anyways, so it's not too big of a deal. Gas IO port not available. Uh, source, ACPI. This is like... Hmm. How do I want to deal with that? Technically, that's going to go into a library, too. Um... That's tough with the conditional compilation. Do I just allow it for that specific variance? These ones, I can change all of these. Nice. I'm going to have to remember that. That's actually really nice. It's just the exact same shit, but much cleaner. Ooh, do we fit? Do we fit? Yes, we do. And... And... Um, is it good? Okay, add. Oh my god, they keep coming. Wrapping sub, wrapping add. Okay. All right, pretty much no more issues. What? What? Allow? Hello? 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 Is it not allow? Okay. That's fucking weird, dude. But it... <sighs> so only that one is local to the module? Because this one isn't module local. This is crate. It's crate local. Maybe I didn't build it. Or didn't save it. But we'll see. Yeah, I'm still getting it. I think. Yeah. Okay. 
What the fuck? Clippy was saying something about the allow? Uh, I don't know. I don't get that. That makes no sense. Like, I can pass it into an argument to Clippy, but why would it be... There is no lib.rs. I'm putting it in the right spot. The allows are in the wrong place? What? No, they're not, though, right? If I get rid of this, I get an error, right? If I get rid of that, I have redundant field on mm range set. And if I, get, if I put that back in, I do not get that. It's gone. It has an effect outside of the module that I'm in because I'm at the root of the crate. This is the correct spot to put them. Does your library not have a lib. There is no library. There are no libraries here. Maybe this is why I didn't use Clippy. I hate shit like this. Dash dash. Sick. Okay. You have a main R This is main RS, guys. I know how to put fucking crate annotations. God damn it. <laughs> Tell you should start using print line. No, fuck print line. Fuck print line is so stupid. I hate that shit. Print line is how your docs aren't the fucking same. Your like produced output is not the same on fucking architectures. Fuck that. Your cargo tomal is weird. Oh, how is my cargo tomal weird? I I literally just have a main. This is like hello world. Printlin literally ap ap appends a new line? Really? Well, then that's wrong. <laughs> Discuss this? Gave you a link? Yeah, I mean... It's still dumb. It's still dumb. 
Extremely Windows portable. If your main is called core requirements? No, my main is called source slash main dot rs. Main bootloader entry for fuzz OS. <laughs> 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 we got you, Sora. We got you, fam. You're having a day. It's okay. Uh. Now just add it to the lib.rs, you fuckers. You absolute fuckers. Okay, so... Range set, those will get solved when we move it into another library. This, I think we just have to say allow, allow dead code for that variance. Is, do you think that's the best way? Just allow it for that specific one? Because it's conditionally compiled, I think that's okay. Um, redundant closure? What? What? <laughs> You what, mate? <laughs> Is Clippy not smart enough to know that's not a function? You can do that? That's considered a function? Enum variants are functions? Okay, I don't know. I, I, I knew that. I didn't know that. I knew that. Since when? Since when? That's 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 very recent. That must be nightly. It's a new change. This <laughs> is new. It's very new. Um I can't believe they changed Rust like that just overnight. It's just kind of fucked up, to be honest. <laughs> Must be master brain. It's probably not even master. It's probably like that fucking like. It's probably like some random person username under testing under branch. Very fresh. Got it when you installed nightly. Exactly. <laughs> Lint level is defined here. Oh, 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 that's just saying for this. Okay, okay. Spooky Rust 2 stuff. Um, It is dumb that it doesn't handle the print thing correctly. Print line's just dumb, dude. Fuck print line. It's just so gross. So gross, dude. Yuck. 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 There's just so much extra code to add print line support. I'm just going to put explicit new lines. Like, what happens when I want to turn it into a byte array and I want to put a B in front? Well, now I have to go add a new line out back. I just, I just don't like print line. That's just not my cup of tea, to be honest. I like being explicit. I like it being in memory. I don't like having to use like an iterator to chain in a new line or have like a whole different like print with new line path to my code because otherwise you're either going to have a massive runtime cost or you're going to have code bloat due to it. System.out.println. No. 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 
All right, where's the Yuffie spec? You can do enum variants since Rust 1.0.0. Oh, interesting. That kind of makes them a little bit more powerful. Foo Endel. <laughs> uh, before an exit, we want after. After boot services. Okay. Um, four, after boot services have been exited, right? I hate PDFs. PDFs suck. Copy and pasting from PDFs is absolute ass. Yeah, there we go. Do you think it knows that's an enum variant when I dock that? Where did that go? <laughs> oh, I had a. <laughs> I had caps lock. Sorry, I had a. I had caps lock. Loader code. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. EFI. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, we're so smart. Um, what? <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Look at this improvement. Bop. 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 Yep. Nice hyphen, sick. Why are there so many different hyphens? Stop! One hyphen. ASCII hyphen. This is this fucking dumb shit. Stop! Get out of here! Fuck the M dash. This isn't a fucking academic paper. Just use a fucking hyphen. I don't need fucking Unicode to display a non Unicode fucking character. It's not an M dash. Fuck off. Get out of here. Some absolute garbage. There's soft wrap, soft wrap, hyphen, hyphen in words. There's n dash and m dash. Yeah, you're just wrong. The mathematical minus sign. 
Oh, I haven't even been checking that I'm applying these to the right documentation, to be honest. But I think I have so far. Reserve memory type, loader code, loader data, boot services code, boot services data, runtime services code, data conventional, U unusable memory, reclaim memory, NVS, memory mapped IO, IO port space, PAL code, and then persistent memory. Where is that from? Man, these bad takes are coming in hot. Ah, ah! You have a compressor on the mic? I do not. I can I can turn it down. I clip a lot. <laughs> I clip a lot. Persistent memory. What is what is persistent memory? We added that. How did we add that? Wait. What Yuffie spec is this? January 2000... Oh, Yuffie spec. I'm on an ancient spec. Jeez. 6.3, Arata A, October 6, 2020. Let's fucking go. Oh, is this just the Arata? All right, 6.3, here we go. Is this one reference to it? No, there's more. Yeah, f searching doesn't work in PDFs like the first couple times you try it. Okay, we'll search again. Addison's types. They actually changed their documentation. Um, so it's like from a different section, to be honest. Um, memory having this. Hmm. Memory having non-volatile attributes and is distinct from conventional non uh, from supported. Okay, there we go. There we go. Um. And I guess I could say. So a bunch of these are other. And what is this? Uh, EFI memory type. And this comes from a U32. Okay. Um, an unknown or uh, an unknown uh, EFI memory type. Okay. So, boot services code, boot services data, conventional memory, and unuse, uh, okay. And persistent memory we mark. We mark all of those as available post boot services. Um, Mm 
Yeah? I don't put periods after statements. Except for ones that are copied and pasted directly. This one is not. I've got weird rules. Oh my god, look how clean this is now. This is good. This is good, chat. This is good. Range set. This looks like a matches macro. Oh, Clippy. Look at that. Look at that. Wait, how do you do matches? What? 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 Did I not save it? No. Oh, yeah, I probably should give it a, a thing. Okay. Okay, we're making good progress. Those ones will all fix. Fizz adder. Uh oh. Um. The physical address this slice starts at. The length of this physical slice in bytes. Unneeded return, 117, I agree with that. I don't even know why I had a return there. I thought I fixed that at some point, actually. I, I feel like I recall doing that. 694. What do we got going on here? Uh, technically, yeah, don't need to return, but don't I need to wrap all of the other things in? I'll need to wrap, like that. Does it want me to put a question mark at the end of that? Because this is wrong now. But I could go to, like, here and question mark the match. Right? Something like that. Yeah. Oh, it wants me to... Get rid of all these question marks? Oh, I see. I see. I see. That makes sense. I actually don't write code like that. That's fine. No problem with that. Um, passing a unit value to function. I see. It just wants a match and then an okay. Is that what you want, Clippy?
Okay. Wait, what, now now it wants me to go back to returning? Am I crazy? Isn't that literally what it just yelled at me for doing? I think it's because it was in that match. Thirty five in serial. Fine, fuck you, Clippy. I'm actually okay with that. An empty loop weighs CPU cycles. Are empty loops still undefined behavior in Rust? Range sets. It's just the range set stuff. Asm halt. Yeah, we could add that, but I just didn't want to yet. It's a hard problem. Um, okay. But yeah, I think everything is good now, isn't it? Oh, am I still getting the empty loop shit? Yeah, I am. Um, uh, core. Sync. Atomic. Um, oh, wow. Since when? What's spin loop versus spin loop hint? Oh, it's deprecated. Okay. Okay. Good. Wait. Oh, I loop somewhere else too. Panic. Uh, OS exiting. Boom. Okay, we'll get to see if we need stack probes. I'm curious if... Check stack. Hmm. What? Oh, does it just not work? Compiling UV application on our holy shit.
Hmm. Arc. Panic strategy. And what did uh, single thread do in Rust? I might make our own um makes atomics casual. Yeah, and I can't be having that. Um Okay. Uh custom Yuffie spec with um, single thread false. That needs to change. Here are all the target spec options. Yeah, there's a shit ton. Stack probes. Yeah, stack probes none just doesn't work. Playing around with these specs is really scary. Hmm. I don't like that it's calling check stack. God damn it. And that's just a bug? Straight up a bug? Rust probe stack not to find an ARM64. MSVC runtime as a check stack. So while it's running on Windows, it's not a problem. Target OS is keep it all in line. If it's not Apple or Yuffie.
Yuffie X86, triple underscore. Apple. Yuffie X86, 64. I see. So... But target OS is Yuffie, is it not? OS is Yuffie, is it because of this? I think we tried this before. Oops. And this gave us problems for some reason. I can't remember why, but this gave us problems. Yeah, it fucking crashes LLVM. Oh, it differs from LVM default, which is this. Oh, I remember doing this, okay. So this is the correct default for ARM Yuffie. So now it's gonna work, right? All right. Unknown file type. That's, ah. Uh, Uh, I don't think Cargo Clean's gonna fix it. But we'll, we'll see. I can't remember if we tried this before. It'd be huge if it did, but I, I don't think it's gonna work. I don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, um... Let's see, Eric 64, Yuffie. Like what? LVM target, PC Win32 cough. The longer I can go without learning Kubernetes, the more joyful my life will be. Yeah, fuck that. So... Unknown file type. Let's take a look at one of these. Elf. Why would this be making an elf? I mean, I guess that might be okay. What? What's the correct target? Uh, 
Elvium, Yuffie, Eric 64 target. Yuffie. Nope. I don't know what LVM target it wants. LVM target list. Is there a way to get a list of all the targets? I hate how it's such a pain to fucking get it. What the fuck? Do I have LC? Yeah, but that's not going to get me the sub targets. Uh What? If he isn't one of them OS type. Hmm. Uh, targets. This. Print. Target spec JSON. Yeah, so this targets Windows. Uh, so it's a Rust problem then. Rust needs to have a target OS, Yuffie, comma, target arc. Uh, yeah, comma, target arc, um, x86-64. But why would disabling stack probes still emit this? Like, why would... I don't understand. Flavored Yifi, disable red zone. Stack probes kind call? Oh, is that what? Well, hmm. Do you think, do you think that'll fix it? I feel like no, but I'm curious if this will cause Clang to call Rusts, and Rusts will, yeah. Nope. Arc code model, disable red zone, scripts. Yeah, I think I just copied this. 
executables is built in, is like MSVC. Oh, there's some new shit in here. We're going to grab this. We're going to grab this. Updating it. Okay, so this is the x86 one. And we'll say ARX64, CPU ARX64. Features don't need. ARX64. Okay, so all we did is we just changed everything to ARX64, right? Right? It's gonna be com it's 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 going to complain. Uh, not a recognized processor. Yeah, we can just get rid of that. And then this is going to literally tell us the LVM default, which is fantastic. We'll just replace it. Okay. So now, uh, all we did is we took the x86-64 one and we pasted it here. And then we fixed it up to use ARC64. Oops, cargo clean make. But it's not going to work again. I don't understand why it would be hitting check stack. So what does stack probes actually do in Rust then? Because it, it doesn't seem like it does shit. Okay. Rust lang rust. Include stack probes dot rs. It's the only code? It's test code. But it just, it doesn't seem to do anything. Um... We don't link to any CRT. Is it LVM that generates it? I guess what's stack probes false supposed to do then? Or like stack probes none? Like I don't I don't understand. I don't get why it's calling that. Like how What's the point of stack probes? None. Hmm. I don't get it. Hmm. 
I, I just I just don't understand what I, I don't even see where stack probes is being used in Rust code. Like the Rust code just doesn't even reference this string. Like it, it does nothing. There's a test. I guess maybe GitHub search just doesn't work. But it, it I, I literally don't see where this is used in Rust code. GitHub search is broken as hell. <sighs> Okay. Okay, source here. I don't know where Russ puts its source, to be honest. Uh, probably isn't there. Is it not in Rust up? Nope. Like... Like, there's... The fuck? <laughs> Isn't this the Rust source? Yeah, like, this is the source. Yeah. Yep. Um. I guess this doesn't have the compiler source, does it? That, okay. This is just library source. Okay. What time is it? Uh, four in the morning. Yeah, I guess they parse it into that stack probe, stack under probes. Uh, spec mod.rs. So this is okay. Here we go. None. Okay. So this makes an LVM attribute, but if it's none, it doesn't make an attribute. Hmm. 
No support for stack probes for other architectures. Like stack probe type none leads to no attribute being passed to LVM. Um, Rust. I want LVM args. Help. Help list. Help list hidden. For more, okay. So this is everything. Grep I stack. I guess we can search for probe. I don't see an LVM arg that hits probe. Oh, that might just be the target. Rusty, uh, target, Eric64, unknown windows. Oh, uh, Rust doesn't know what that target is. I guess I can say Eric64, unknown, Yuffie. No? Oh, I guess I can use the custom spec. Fuzzos Cargo ARX64. So we'll say target that. Bash dash target that. Yeah, I'm not seeing any probe options for LVM arguments. That's XED6. I just I guess I just don't know where where this goes. LVM attribute place probe stack. There. So that is probe stack. Check attributes. If you set stack probe size zero, it should not emit it. Yeah. So the, the thing that's curious to me is should this be passing a none to this? Um, if it has a probe stack inlined into a function, hmm. So I guess if you give it a probe stack, it will then invoke that thing. And then if you do inline, I don't understand. I guess you pass it inline asm. 
But I don't see that documentation for it in LVM. I'm mainly curious about probe stack. Like, is there a way for me to turn it off without doing the zero? Because I know it can, I, I know there are many workarounds, but none of these seem clean. There's no stack arg probe, which disabled stack probes. Doesn't emit check stack. Doesn't that emit check stack calls irrespective of the stack size? I, I have no idea. I'm not seeing MNO stack arg probe as a flag that I can pass to LVM, at least from the Rust perspective. Hey, Shursack, how you doing? Sure, Shack. Um, disables the ABI required stack probes. And I think that's what... I think this should be an else add function attribute string value. And it should give it uh, no stack arg probe if it's none. Because right now, none just doesn't specify a probe type, but I think none should strictly say don't probe, right? Like, wouldn't that make sense? I feel like none should, <laughs> stack probe none shouldn't just be like, oh, just uh, ignore it. Because I do see that there is an option for no stack arg probe. And it disables the ABI required stack probes. Use stack probe. Get the lowering. Get the stack probe symbol name. Um, you think stack probe type none when you explicitly say use no stack probe? Like when I say stack probes, kind, none. You think that should be default? <laughs> you think that should just mean like, yep, use the default kind of stack probes. <laughs> Because that's what this boils down to. Stack probe type none, that leads to none, which means that this doesn't execute. The symbol name needs to be empty. Yeah, and the problem is it doesn't add the attribute, right? Um, like, I feel like what this should be is it should be, um, I feel like this should be else, emit this, and then it should emit the explicit, uh, probe stack type, because there is a, there's this, no stack arg probe. And the documentation for that says, um, this attribute disables ABI required stack probes, if any. But the question is, does LVM just fail open on that too? Yeah, it's an, it, yeah, it's an enum variant. None just turns this into none, which then doesn't add the attribute. It should be that, or it should add probe stack, and it should be empty. I don't know if that would be an empty string or or empty as in like unpopulated, but like that. Stack probe type. 
Hmm. Merged. So what is none supposed to be? Add another none option and make it the default for now. Change built-in kernel target to be OS equals none. Stack probe call everywhere again. This is seven days ago. It's this Easter, so maybe null. Like... There's been recent work on this. Fix error messages. Inline or none, inline or call. I think there needs to be a way to disable stack probes. And I, I don't know the right way to do it, but I, I don't think none should mean default. Uh, what Rust version am I on? One point five three. Okay. So some of the ways that this is mentioned, it it makes it sound like none is meant to. From stack, change built-in kernel targets to be us none throughout. Because there's a comment made There's a comment made that's really interesting talking about, like, we're already gating the x86 version, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if Clang is correct here. I'll add another none option and make it default. So if none is the default, like, that, to me, is not right. I think you should have, like, an enum variant default and then none or off or disable... Don't think it can be fixed. Like, surely there's some way to get LVM to just not emit it. Like, that's what it should do. LVM should not emit stack probes at all, in my opinion. What if you do kind as inline? Yeah, still doing check stack. Uh, what are the other kinds that I have? Kind. Now I don't have that open shit. Damn, and I just closed that too. Uh, what are the other kinds? There's like ru uh, rust something. None inline and call. That's annoying. That's just so stupid, dude. 
I guess we might as well leave it on call, because that's uh, what it defaults to. Um... And this should fail due to not being documented. Good. Um, the uh, stack probe implementation for Windows targets. This seems is currently needed for Eric64 as uh, Rust doesn't uh, disable slash generate a stub for probes. Okay, um, yeah, and everything will work. We didn't change any uh, semantics of the OS, but weird. Be right back. Well, stub is a good interim solution. Yeah, that's the solution I've been using for five, year, four years now. However long I've been doing OS Dev and Rust. I just was kind of hoping there'd be a better solution. I got some jerky. What are some good headless server resources? Get IPMI. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, really? Unused value? Oh, um, For arm. That's fine. We'll just do this. Conditional compilation. All right. So now it's just, uh, it's just range set stuff. And that's fine. Range set will go into a library, so we don't need to worry about it. Oh. I have some tough turkey, but it's so fucking good. Um. Okay. So. ACPI. Documentation. We want to add references to documentation. And we want to add documentation for parameters.
Uh, it was like star dash. This, yeah. The physical address to perform a checksum on. Size, the length in bytes of the memory to checksum. Type, the type of the uh, table um, which is being checked summed. This is simply uh, used to affect the error value that is returned if the checksum is invalid. Okay. Good, good. Okay. Um parameters adder. Oh. Um I want returns. Okay. If the checksum is valid. Um, and then, I guess I can say error on errors. Is that gonna work? Okay, if the checksum is valid, error on errors. And then that will link to a CPI error. Error. Yep, a CPI error. Okay, sweet. Okay. Unless I want to do this. I don't know if that'll work because that's a variant. Nope. Okay. Then here, the physical address of the... Um, Memory to be interpreted as an RSDP table. Okay. Returns. Um, okay. I guess I'm going to say this. Thoughts? Because the result is kind of implied. Um, returns. I'm going to say a well-formed... Can I say self here? No, it would be confusing. A well-formed RSDP... If adder references a valid RSDP table, error on errors. Thoughts? That's on RSDP from address. It loads an RSDP structure. Physical address of the memory to be interpreted as an RSDP table. And then a well-formed RSDP, um, which is itself. If adder references a valid RSDP table, error on errors. I think that's good, right? I think that's, that's a good uh, documentation there. Okay, and then we're going to just steal this. 
Um, okay. Extended. Extended. Good. All right. We've got kind of the same thing down here from adder on this. Load a uh, generic table, a generic ACPI table with the standard ACPI table header. Physical address in the memory to be interpreted as a as an ACPI table. Um, crane lift will be slow as fuck. It shouldn't be. There's no reason it should be. It probably will be, but it shouldn't be. Um, loaded generic table. Yep. Okay. Returns. Now... Hmm. Hmm. How did I uh, mark down? How do I do a ordered list? Oh, literally like that. Okay. A tuple containing the following. One. A table containing the parsed table header. Zero. One, a table type indicating the type of um, SPI table which was identified. Two, a the physical address of the table. And three, oh, the physical address of the um, Payload. Uh, opaque payload of the table. And then the size in bytes of the, the size. I like to do this in bytes, in parens, of the uh, payload. Yeah? Let's go. Let's see. Table. Look at that. On um, error, a error. Is physical address just a wrap around a pointer? It's a wrap around a U size, but yeah. on error, an error. Okay. So the goal is that all functions will have those. Um, since from actually, since this is a trait, this will inherit the documentation. That's some good documentation. Is that is that not some fantastic documentation, chat? Hmm.
It's okay. Well, fuck you. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Um I've seen better. There is no better documentation. This is the best documentation that's ever been written. I don't know what y'all are on. Okay. So. This is parse the payload of an MADT. Um, HPI MADT table. Parameters. McCaffey in a 24-hour coding stre spree? <laughs> what are you coding? Uh, of... MADT, otherwise, uh, on error, error. I think that's fine, All right? A Vulcan-based game engine? Oh, cool. When you're not streaming, what do the other monitors do? I mean, I just use I just use them for uh, like coding. Got code up, documentation up, a browser up. Okay. An IO port address, simple. Read a value from an IO port, returns um, the uh, value of the IO port or error on error. Huh? Value of the IO port, the value read from the IO port. The value read from the IO port or on error, error. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, 
the value to write to the IO port returns um or on error error yeah good good uh returns a zero extended version of the uh value um rub um hmm by the gash there we go Mm -hmm. Gosh. Okay. Oh, this is on gas type. All right, gas type. Read, read a value from the unspecified location, or from the specified location, uh, in self, a zero extended version of the value read, the original size specified by access size, on error, error. Okay. Right, a value. To the specified, to the location specified by self. You can even link. Really? Really? Are you sure? No. No. Nice try, chat. Typical chat. Um, parameters. Val. A value to be written to the uh, location. This value is truncated to the size specified by the access size of the um, of the gas type. Ban the real tilted sheet. Chat, you're getting really uh, ban heavy today. Y'all want to ban everyone for everything today. Um, or on error. Error. A value to be written to the location. This value is truncated to the size specified by the actual size of the gas type. All right. Okay, now we do this. Um, offset by index parameters. Index 
the offset. Um, to be applied, I don't know, the offset into the location. Um, hmm. Hmm. The zero indexed hmm. is determ determined by Register with, yeah. Can I do this? I don't know if I want it to say self. It's on gas, read. Self register with, that work. Gas variant, uh, oh. Mm, can I? That's not gonna work, is it? No. No. So, okay, Gamoza bans himself for a few weeks at a time, anyways. The candle scented? Yes, it's uh, coconut saffron. Oh my god, this jerky is so fucking good. You know this file format uses the pointer 1000x as null and zero as val? Oh, that sounds great. Um, can I do that? There's no way. Can I say self dot? No, that would make no sense. Hmm. Oh, I guess I would have to specify a variant. We'll do that. Okay. There we go. Paste. This. Parameters. Index. The zero index offset. Okay. 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 Um uh the gas type which Contains the um, post indexed, uh, which contains a simplified post index representation of a gas or on error. Error. Ah? Uh, yeah? They also encode half the integers as ASCII hex. Gross. Pretty normal, though. Pretty common. From we don't need. Okay. Process the payload of a, a SPCR. 
And we can just do that from this. Uh, parse the payload of a uh, SPCR. SPCR, SPCR. Okay. Look at this code quality going through the roof. It's getting real good now, chat. Look at this documentation. I don't know if Chad's going to be able to handle this documentation. Look at this. It's so good. MADT. RSDP. RSDP extended. SPCR. Cargo doc so smooth. Yeah. Personally, I'm actually never going to use cargo doc. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, use the code, but still, this is great. Tuple. Imagine being excited about writing documentation. <laughs> Zero percent of my coworkers are. They they just don't understand, dude. All right. This is some good shit, dude. So good! Code is a masterpiece. Returns. Bam. No time for docs when deadlines are looming. Yikes. Bam. Okay. Chat, can we get a check mark for ACPI? ACPI check mark done. Documented. Core requirements done. EFI. This is a big one. Check. <laughs> Doesn't take that much time to add docs. No, it does not. People are just lazy. Register the system table into a global so it can be used for prints which do not take a self or a pointer as an argument. And thus must, this must be able to be found on a global. Yeah. And this is really good. We exchange it in with a null uh, table, which is the default. And we replace it sequentially consistent 
with the table and then we do that by move so we no longer get access to that and that's really cool so that basically means that when we go into source main and we get passed in the system table here which is kind of like a raw pointer well it is a raw pointer we register that system table and then we can no longer use that we've registered that with the system and since we don't implement clone or copy on this uh, that's the only place where we can ever use that and that's really good it just it prevents us from like trying to use that raw pointer ourselves and it moves kind of the ownership of the EFI system table into the EFI code which can actually operate on that pointer because nothing outside of this module can so it's it's really, really strictly scoping, and to me, uh, I like that a lot. Test done? Oh yeah, we're not gonna write tests. Tests are tests are stupid. Um, write a string to the Yuffie console output. Then we'll do uh, parameters. Um, string the string to write to the Yuffie I console output using the Yuffie um, API. Okay. Um, returns this or, or on error. Bink, bink, error. Okay. Get the base of the ACPI table RSDP. If the EFI, if EFI did not report an ACPI table, then we return none. No, we don't. We return ACPI table not found. Returns. Uh, the base address of the ACPI RSDP table as specified by EFI on error, bink bink, error. Okay. That's stupid, I, I verbal? Hyperbole? Maybe? There aren't really tests that you can do on an OS. <laughs> Not much you can really test. Um, parameters. Image handle. Did we skip over this? We did. Oh, because, yeah, okay, yeah, didn't take parameters. Image handle. Uh, the handle to EFI as, uh, the handle to the EFI image as passed in, as passed into, what is it, EFI under main? If I mean, okay, returns uh, the range set spec uh, containing the ranges of memory which are available for general purpose use um, from this point on, on error, error. Containing the ranges of physical memory, physical addresses, which are available for general purpose use from this point on, on error, error. Okay. I said the dog versus test group divide. Writing tests is just a pain in the ass for OS dev. 
Like, what would I do? Rip out ACPI tables from all of the hardware that I have, and then, like, write parsers for it, write a bunch of stubs, and then get this OS to somehow compile as a uh, Linux application so I can run the code, but then it's not running in the same environment? Like... I can test things once I've booted, but until I've booted, it's pretty fucking hard to actually test anything. Returns, um, uh, we'll say true if the, um, if the memory type is uh, usable after exiting boot services. Okay. We're not going to document these because we use the documentation directly from the spec. So, fn documented. Params and returns. Returns only. Parameters and returns. Returns only. Okay, uh, that looks good. So that's EFI. So all these things should be pretty well documented. Okay. This is really good. Love it. Should I return a fizz adder from that? I guess, I don't know if EFI requires that you're running in physical memory, to be honest. So we don't know if that's actually a physical address. Um, write a string. All right, that looks really good. Let's take a look at MM now. And then we'll actually do code improvements. Um, fizz mem. Uh, returns the value at location, at the value <laughs> present in physical memory. Huh? I don't know. Bank parameters val star. <laughs> Gotta prove Rust C first. Yep, see, tests are useless because you can't prove Rust C is, is valid. Um, the value to write into physical memory. Okay. Parameters. Adder the physical address to slice. Len the size of uh, the size in bytes to slice returns a fizz slice representing the memory um, specified. Yeah. Okay. Returns uh, the remaining length of the slice, or I guess I could just say remain the length of the slice. The oh, length of the slice, there we go. That's that's a, that's a some good documentation there. A discard, uh, parameters, bytes, the number of bytes to discard from the slice from the start. Uh, Consuming from the start of the slice. Okay. Returns. Um. Okay. If the uh, 
bytes were successfully discarded. Error if the slice was too small to discard the bytes. Uh-huh. Okay. Returns. Um, T read from the start of the slice. Read a T and unaligned. A potentially. T read from the start of the slice. Um, error if the slice was too small to hold a T. Beautiful. Good job, chat. Good job, chat. Source MM range set. <laughs> Is incorrect code panic. I don't know if it works like that, does it? It'd be really nice if it did. Uh, returns a an empty range set. Think. Okay. Returns the uh, a slice to the uh, ranges ranges in the uh, <laughs> range set. Okay. Parameters index the index of star. The index of the range to delete from the range set returns um, on success error on error. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, parameters. God damn it. Range the range to insert into the uh, range sets. Um, returns. On success, on Beep. on error. Okay. Okay. Um, parameters. Star range, the range to re uh, a range to remove from the range sets. Pink. Impulse DRF range sets. I might do that. Returns. Okay. Uh, returns the size. Um. Of the uh, range sets or none if. The size of the uh, range set 
exceeds the size, exceeds the bounds of a U64. Huh? Bam. Fuck it. If a struct has an unsized field, that needs to be the last one. I mean, doesn't that make sense? Parameters, size, the number of bytes to allocate, align, the alignment requirements of the allocation. Um, returns, uh, the, um, first, the, um, uh, 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 an address, uh, 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 and I guess we can say an address satisfying the size and align on success. Error on error. Okay. Regions. An optional range set which may restrict the allowed uh, regions from which the allocation must be satisfied. If uh, none, then there is no restriction. Size, align, and regions on success. Oops. Error on error. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a fucking great API? And allocate just calls it with none. It's good. So do I do the... Um, I'm curious. Because I return a U size, but the range sets contains U64s. And I think that we do this by... Uh, go through all the entries, alignment, fix, checked, add, overlaps, return out the pointer, allocation, plus align fixes U size. So I used to, at one point, make sure that a U64 did not truncate into a U size. Um, and I don't see that anymore. I, I guess, I think we would have done that in the first FuzzOS stream where we determined that we no longer needed to do that restriction. Because uh, I think it simplified the code a bit because we know we're running only on a 64-bit architecture. So... I think we're good there. Overlaps. Okay. Um, parameters. Okay. Um, bank A. The first range to check for overlap. And we could say range here, might as well. I don't know if I should go Wikipedia style and basically um, only link once to a thing per like sentence or paragraph, or I guess article or module. Um, the uh, boundaries of the overlapping region or none if there is no overlap. OK. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, example uh, return value. Yeah? Text. Hey. Hey. Ha. <sighs> Thanks a lot, Eddie Bear. <laughs> we'll maybe we'll maybe talk with chat when we finish this uh, this commenting phase, and we'll do it. We'll just we'll just go into our chat mode and kind of chill for a bit. Damn. Uh, check for okay. Returns true if the uh, the um. Returns true. The range to check. Hmm. Um. As a subset of B. And this is. And we could say like, the needle. The range. Uh, to um. A contains B dot start or B contains A dot start. Looks so fancy for what? For where? Uh, the range uh, to check as a super set of A. The haystack. Returns if the um, checks if A is entirely contained by B. Uh, and then what do we want to do? Returns true if A uh, is contained entirely by B, otherwise false. Are you pro encoding? Yes, I am pro encoding. I'm I am very pro encoding. Um okay. I think we documented everything in there. Um great. Great. Oh my god, this code just, it can't get better. This code just cannot improve. Look at this documentation. Print. If you're pro, explain what context for is in C++. We'll never know what context for is in C++. It, it depends on your compiler. <laughs> and your spec. And your feeling and your mood. Okay, right string. Oh, nice. That actually goes to right. Yep, we did that. We already did that. Good job, us. Print. I'm okay with that. Not elaborating on that more. Um, like, we could describe the arguments and stuff on print, but I don't think we need to. E source. 
Um, what's last year? Serial. Oh, we did serial already, didn't we? I did have, oh, we don't have returns. Yikes. Um. I guess that's not going to be in scope. I'm curious what that's going to say. I think we didn't finish that because we're going to move we're going to restructure a lot of this. Um Yeah, sweet. Pull an error. Now is that going to say unused import? Yes. Okay. Oh, but that's going to display it as that. Oh, gross, dude. If you're pro, could you do some crazy pre-processing stuff in C? No, we don't write C on this stream because it's a garbage fucking language. Uh, error. I think that's the correct syntax, isn't it? Fuck. Whoa, you can't link to a crate like that? Do I just say ACPI? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. What am I doing? Thank you. God damn. It's like, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> okay. Error. Beautiful. Bink. Bink. Good job, chat. Good job, chat. Okay, I think we've documented everything, have we not? I think we did it. Read a bite. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Pay us more, please. Uh, write a bite. Okay. Read bite. Read a bite from the serial port. Return on success. Uh, but that's not true. Um, this is a very complex return. On... On success returns um, the byte which was read from the serial port or none if no byte was uh, available. Otherwise returns Error. Bam! Look at that. Boom. Boom. On success, return the byte which was read from the serial port or none if no byte was available. Otherwise, returns error. If <laughs> you why don't you use nano? Yikes, dude. Nano in 2020. Uh, get status. Okay. I like... <laughs> All right. <laughs> thoughts, thoughts on colon W as a file. What, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> oh, 
Um, yeah, uh, this seems to work on uh, Gen 2. Uh, IDK what this service actually is. Um, okay. <laughs> if you're so pro, why don't you pro in the best language, JavaScript? You mean Node.js? Look at this masterpiece of an operating system. Let's just let's just reboot it just to see how masterpieceful it is. Okay, and then we can start working on our checklist. Okay, that's a lot of work to do. Um, hey chat, how are you doing today? Let's uh, let's let's chat with chat. Wait, did that just triple fault? No, it's just booting. Ah, there it is. Did it triple fault? It's fucking arm. OS exiting. Damn, he has notes. Yeah, yeah, we got we got a we got a schedule of things to do. GitHub link. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Write it yourself, you ungrateful shits. Um, <laughs> Real pros use organic natural paper. I think this is organic. It's got, it's got, it's got trees on the front, right? And it, if it has trees on the front, then it has to be organic. Holy shit, I'm like halfway through this. Oh, God. What languages are you pro with? Uh, any language I need to be. <laughs> Whatever language I want to write in. <laughs> mainly, uh, mainly C and Rust. I don't really write in any other languages. Pretty much just Rust, to be honest. Are you pro in Spanish? Uh, un poquito. <laughs> I will follow every goddamn YouTube video and copy each piece of line by line and post it on git <laughs> don't worry there's gonna be plenty of spicy code i'll write off stream yo man awesome where can i read more about whatever it is you're building uh mainly just bang project <laughs> maybe bang fuzz os i don't know if there's a length oh there is oh thank god thank god i did that four months ago do you have a cs degree i do not um Unless you mean a, a cool swag degree, because I've got a cool swag degree. Um, do you know machine learning? Eh, to a rudimentary level. I know how to implement most of the machine learning things, but I don't use machine learning. So I don't know the applications, but I know how to write it. Did he get into TBC beta? Let's not, let's not insult me. Are we streaming right now? The answer is yes. Did I get into TBC beta? You really fucking think I'd be streaming right now if I could be playing some TBC? Yeah, okay, oh, okay. MLS exclusively used its VC hype for tech bros. Hell yeah. That's what we're about on this stream. Not actually. We do meme that up a little bit. <laughs> You're not better. Fuck you, our pet detective. <laughs> do you know how to write up good neural networks? No one does. There is no good, good neural network. But no, not really. I don't know how to... Don't really know how to use them. Have you ever heard of old school RuneScape? Uh, yeah. I played it a little bit last year, actually. With neural networks, you can recognize patterns. Poorly. <laughs> Poorly. Like, technically, yes. 
Can they be used for code coverage stuff? I Truthfully, I think the answer is yes. I do think there are applications of machine learning into fuzzing. Um, more so on the analysis of the fuzzer and more so such that the fuzzer can tune itself to the target. So basically, as it learns certain strategies that are working more or less, it can kind of weight and bias those things. But that's not really a traditional, that's not a neural network. It's more of just a machine learning feedback mechanism. Arguably, people would say it's not machine learning. Because the, the difference between machine learning and not is the amount of funding that you get. If you are not funded and you don't run an academic PhD group, and you call whatever feedback mechanism, even if it is a proper neural network, you can't call it ML, because people would get really upset. Um, I guess that's what they did at the DARPA contest, kind of. Yeah, I mean, arguably, and we've had this argument before, you could consider fuzzing to some level be machine learning. Um... And I, I, I'm pretty comfortable with saying that. But, of course, no one will want to admit that because fuzzing is dumb and stupid. But feedback-driven fuzzing that, like, auto-tunes its parameters uh, based on what it's observing in the code is, I would say, absolutely machine learning. What if you have a master's degree? Yeah, can't, you can't do machine learning if you have a master's. You have to have a PhD. And you have to live in San Francisco. Otherwise, you're not doing machine learning. You're just programming. Do you have enough monitors? I do not. This is an ML stream now. <laughs> With neural networks, you can even predict the random generator. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Put data in bucket, run learning algo. If it doesn't fit, just stir the puddle of, da of data and run it again. Yeah. You just overfit, but not too much. You you want to overfit to a small enough amount that it doesn't look like you're overfitting. How about Seattle? No. You can't do machine learning in Seattle. <laughs> But you're coding machine, you're learning, so arguably you are ML. There we go. You're a coding machine, you're learning. So you are arguably ML. <laughs> also pruning. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's what we that's what we meme about here, where it's like when you literally as a human are making modifications every day to the layout of your neural network and changing the filter functions you use, and changing your activation functions, and implementing, like, new ideas for these things. Is it really machine learning at that point, or are you just programming in a language that's just, like, matrices connected together, but you're just writing the... the matrix math? <laughs> you should go to a comedy event and tell jokes about ML? No. Why not Seattle? Because I'm just memeing on you. Because you keep asking questions. So I'm just giving you shittier and shittier answers. <laughs> but also because a lot of people gatekeep that all like the real ML happens in Silicon Valley. Neural nets are matrix multiplication mostly. Yeah. But now models can express more dynamics, like neural network synthesis, uh, neural program synthesis, like where it modifies itself, or like, like neural nets, it's neural net. I have seen things like that, but I don't know neural program synthesis. Oh, are you talking? Hmm. I don't know what you're referring to, honestly. You're fuzzing my neural network? I mean, that would be really easy. Neural networks fall over to fuzzing so fucking easily. Literally, you put like two, two green pixels on a massive image, like a 4K image, and it has no idea what the fuck happened. I love it. 
Hey, chocolate or jerky? It's jerky. I noticed the Java neural network I was forced to write. I just noticed the Java neural network I was forced to write. Time for some cringe. Oh, is that like a college project? <laughs> I think all data scientists should participate in No Neural Network November. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. The new convolutional neural networks are as good as human eye? Yeah. No, they aren't. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Maybe to a maybe to a well formatted data set, but not to an adversarial data set. Absolutely fucking not. They're also very good at solving through partial differential equations. Interesting. Like coming up with an approximation. I mean, that's what they are, right? Literally, neural networks are just very, very, very complex mathematical equations that draw a line. That's it. You're just drawing a line. You're trying to fit data to a line with many, many, many dimensions. And then you're trying to basically find the thresholds of whether it's above or below that line. That's it. Run Chikata can be unrolled like an RNN. Oh, interesting. ML is function approximation? Yeah. Oh my god, this jerky is so fucking good. I basically had jerky for dinner, but uh, I'm not complaining. <laughs> the big problem now is the tools. TensorBoard sucks and Python. Yeah, I mean... Pretty much all that shit is just done in, uh, in Python. Glorified curve fitting. Hey, I mean, it, ha it has value. It's just not as much value as people think it has. ML does some, or like neural that do some pretty incredible things. But those things are not hiring a data scientist for your three-person application, your app company. It's ridiculous. It's like everyone's just trying to, like, follow Google when they're not Google. <laughs> it has value if you have tons of compute. It's just, I don't know. I think it's great for image recognition and like handwriting recognition or just like image processing in general. I haven't been super impressed yet. Have you ever made your own jerky? I've not. There's some cool models for fitting to light fields. Interesting. It's not necessarily that I don't think it has many, many applications. I just think that the non-machine learned variants are often better. It is the solution to language? I don't know if that's the case. I genuinely don't. Like... We haven't really invested in different ways of doing learning, right? I really think it would be bold to say it's the correct way to solve a problem because pretty much every single time we've ever come up with a mathematical representation of something, it's always been superseded. Like, whatever we understand now to be a good solution, probably 50 years from now will be a, a complete fucking shitty hack. Um... I don't know. Also, 
so much investment has gone into neural nets that we haven't really explored much outside of it. Like, we don't really know what we could have had, right? We could have totally, like, had some paper that came out in 1985 that did floral networks, and floral networks are, like, some different way of doing learning, and we did the same thing. We invested 30 years of human research into that thing, and then we'd all be saying, wow, floral networks are the way to go, and we, like, wouldn't even know neural networks, right? It's really hard to say whether or not it's the correct way to be doing things, if it's one of the very few ways that we have been exploring. Um, I think a lot of it is neural networks have scaled well as computers have gotten more powerful. Um, but, like, the progress that neural networks have made is pretty much directly correlated with computational increase. Um... There, there have been big breakthroughs every once in a while, but it's not that many massive breakthroughs. A lot of them are just finding new activation functions, new ways of laying out networks, new filtering functions to apply to your data sets beforehand. Um, I mean, that makes sense, arguably, because neural networks at its core is just a fucking matrix multiplication and sum, right? Like... You can't really fundamentally change neural nets. You can only really change the way that you filter stuff. But... I'm familiar with SVM. Um, theoretical under underpinnings haven't changed much, but the field has grown legs with more access to compute. Yeah. Eventually, the problem becomes data set collection. And that's a really hard problem. Like, when you have, um... I think a great example, um... Is, like, when Neural Nets played, like, StarCraft or Dota or whatever fucking game, right? They kind of have to handhold it and pre-format the data. Like, find the important information from the battlefield that needs to be fed into the network, Right? It's not figuring that out itself. You're, you're not pointing a neural network at the game, and it's figuring out, like, oh, in the bottom left, I have my gold counter, and the gold counter is relevant to when I can buy new items. Like, all of those things have been brought down to a level that the net doesn't have to reason about those things. And that's a very human involvement. Um, and until networks can really make leaps, or not even networks, but machine learning can make those leaps and bounds itself, it's really just a matter of fitting to the data that a human is able to present to it. It's not really capable of A-B testing and exploring new data that it could be consuming because it's only receiving the data that humans are giving it. Obviously, it can like weight them down to filter things out, but networks basically are given a very strict subset of the data rather than the fire hose, which is fucking everything, where it then figures out from there. Um, but that is an incredibly hard problem, and that's a problem that I don't know if we'll ever even solve. Uh, so I can't really knock machine learning for that. What I can knock is people who claim that Neural nets just automatically are fucking great at things. No, they're absolute dog shit unless you literally sit there tuning them, hand holding them, and doing massive compute on them for years with engineers who are much more expensive than traditional programmers. And for like many, many, many uses of machine learning, you're probably just better off writing the fucking code that does what the neural net is trying to approximate. Um, it just. My issues with machine learning are not the actual machine learning aspects itself. It's the, it's the fucking slimy used car sales pitch that really is deceptive uh, of what it's actually capable of doing. It can do fucking amazing things, and for many things that we do, it is our best solution. 
but god damn does it have limitations, and no, it does not just fucking work. <laughs> like, you have to effectively program it. You have to be up to date on the current models. You're probably just stealing someone's model anyways. Like, I, I highly doubt some random AI engineer is actually making their own fucking neural nets. They're just plugging in existing neural net shapes and structures and, like, things. And all they're doing is just changing the inputs from, you know, Uber's self-driving car recognition of signs. And they just change out the signs for, you know, buttholes. And they're trying to identify buttholes, right? Like, they're not really doing, like the AI aspects of it. They're they're doing the fucking API plumbing. <laughs> like um just applying other people's research. I don't want to say just applying other people's research. There's a big difference between applying other people's research cuz that's fucking hard. Reading papers and making something more practical out of something that is theoretical is not easy. Um but I don't think that's what uh, whizbang AI engineer at five-person startup is doing. <laughs> I think they are um, grabbing TensorFlow off of GitHub, grabbing TensorFlow image recognition example.py, and then just changing the inputs and letting it train. AlphaGo was amazing, though. Yes, and I watched that live. I watched every single AlphaGo, well, the Lisa Doll uh, five-series AlphaGo, uh, with me and a couple other friends who are really into Go, uh, we were fucking floored uh, the whole time. Like, absolutely fucking nuts. I would say that um, the, uh, what's that fucking group? The Alpha Girl group, wh whatever their fucking name is. Um, I know they're part of Google, but I forget their name of their group. I would say that's one of the groups... One of the few groups in the world, DeepMind, um, one of the few groups in the world that is genuinely applying machine learning, neural nets, whatever you want, extraordinarily effectively. Um, I just don't like seeing random fucking app developers adding neural nets so that they can give me the shittiest possible fucking search suggestion that literally the basic Google algorithm from 1998 would do a better fucking job with a suggestion, right? Where it's like applying AI for what reason? Or like when people use AI to model things that we literally have true representations of, like AI to model physics. <laughs> like... There are many physical properties that we can just actually calculate correctly. We don't have to model it. We don't have to, like, approximate it. We can just do it. Now, there are values there when you do approximations of things to reduce the complexity of the computation or to make things that are notoriously serial into parallel problems. And that has value, right? Like a lot of fluid dynamics kind of end up in that ballpark where we can't really simulate fluids yet. And if we can approximate them, there's a good paper series that I follow on like fluid simulations using machine learning. Um, but once again, we're not arguing the value of ML. We're arguing ML being applied where it shouldn't be and ML being sold as this magic pill that it's not. So, yeah, smoke and mirrors. So I can say the same thing about security. Pretty much, I would say like 99% of the entire fucking security industry is smoke and mirrors and lies. <laughs> it's like network scanners that don't do anything, antiviruses that can be defeated by changing one bit in your fucking malware, like... All of these basic fucking things. People trying to sell, like, new crypto algorithms that objectively are shit or, like, breakable. It's just, yeah. Like, welcome to buzzwording, yeah. Oh, it's so tilting, dude. Um...
I find these more interesting because they're actually tractable problems. Um, we also s still have no biologically feasible learning algorithm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Deep learning powered homegrown crypto algorithms. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of papers that release on AI that are just reruns of the same algorithms on different data sets, is ins it's insane. Yeah. We get a lot of that in security as well where you like read a bunch of papers that are just running AFL on different on different targets most of those get filtered out but there's a lot more submit than than are uh than actually make it out it's pretty bad um hey browse man how are you doing today meanwhile my 5 year old iphone takes 30 seconds to load most websites and everything gets slower every day? Yeah. Isn't every field like this? Yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> Tetris Neural Net. Oh, this looks like some high quality code. Look at this. Get next layer, return next. Oh, I love getters and setters, dude. <laughs> Forward pass. Oh, you do you do the computation yourself. Nice. And there's your back prop. Gradient descent. Learning rate. Right? Okay, you got your biases. That's good. I'm trying to find your activation function. Gradient descend. I'm confused. Gradient. Where's the gradient? Mmm, we're fucking good. The mask was pretty interesting, but the design was kind of forced on us, so it hurts a lot. Yeah. Oh, I see. Get funk. Oh, you have funk. I wasn't looking for a function call. I was looking for math. Ah. So you could swap in different functions. That's kind of cool. So, did you did you beat Tetris? Did it work? Did it work well? Well. It's not sounding too hot. Not really. Good morning, Nightshade, dude. How are you doing? God, this is hurting my jaw. It's a linked list, so I didn't do much progress. I mean, you wrote it in Java, so... <laughs> Perfect, too hot. <laughs> oh, my God. Not by choice. That sucks. <laughs> I 
I would be very upset to have to write in Java. I'd be very upset to write in Java. Like, when working on, like, Android exploits and I write a little bit of Java to, like, bootstrap. It's the worst. I quit that course then. <laughs> First time writing Java. This isn't the worst Java I've seen. It looks respectable. Yeah, your partial your partial derivatives going on. It's not it's not the worst job I've ever seen. How many programming languages do you know? More than I can count. I don't even know how many languages I know. <laughs> I pretty much only write in Rust, though. C++ is greater than C. That's a bold statement in this chat. <laughs> the worst part were my team members uh, who refused to commit the front-end code. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's standard, dude. I couldn't test the tech. Oh, my God, dude. The classic, do all the work for your fucking team. <laughs> Dude, programming project, team programming projects sounds so fucking bad in uni. What is Rust used for? Anything that you can use C for. It's just strictly a C replacement. It's fantastic. It wasn't even in uni? What? Was this high school? Didn't you need Java group project right now? Definitely agree. Oh, man. That's pretty awesome if you're doing this in high school. I'm impressed. I'm really impressed. That's fucking dank. I see it as a C++ replacement, not C. I mean, it has some high-level features that, like, C++ have and C doesn't. But I would say it's a C replacement in that the ABI is uh, compatible with C. You can directly call things, like, pretty easily. You can have other things call you easily. And you can't really do that in C++. Um, I was the only one who didn't have CS classes, so the only one who never wrote, uh, Java. Oh, yeah, doing that in high school is nuts, dude. I'm making an OS from scratch or a Linux just or an OS from scratch. Name mangling is an understatement, yeah. Rust syntax is spooky? Hmm, I would say No. I would say it's spooky if you don't know how computers work. Why is CS Uni so boring? You just want to code and rush. You're going to have to wait until the current generation of like 20 year olds who are writing things in Rust turn 60 and becomes teachers. <laughs> so maybe in like 2050 you'll learn Rust when it's like an outdated language. <laughs> <laughs> My Siri activated when you said sad spooky. Sad, sad spooky. <laughs> there you go. There's neural nets failing right there. <laughs> By that point, they'll finish crane lift. <laughs> when you said spooky. Ha, ah, spooky. Spooky. 
Um, man, I already have a job offer, and I'm thinking about leaving uni. Corona really showed me. That's a big decision. But, uh, it's a, it's a tough decision, but a big decision. C is the way to go. It is not. C is fucking dying, dude. Get that shit out of here. Why are you writing an operating system? Um, for maximum performance and something we, we do called fuzzing, which is used to find security bugs in software. Basically, we're trying to get maximum performance of running an application. We want to run an application and reset it to an original state and run an input through it many, many, many times a second. What's the way to go? Rust. See, boomers just can't be bothered learning Rust. It's not an age thing. Z will die just like COBOL is dead? Oh my god, dude. Proudly a first year dropout? Hell yeah. I dropped out of uni and started work. Don't regret it, uh, but not having a degree closes some uh, immigration options and such. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like, a lot of countries have options for, like, high degrees or other things. I think those, that, for many countries, those also apply to, uh, like, a prestigious job or career. So, a lot of those things kind of work out. But it, it definitely varies by country. What do you think will last longer? C or C++? C. Definitely C. Rust language itself is full of bugs? Cool. We'll fix them. We'll report them. I run into like one Rust bug a year. Not that big of a deal. Rust is written in C? No. No, it's not. It's written in Rust. <laughs> Oh no, we got a C stan. Yeah, I mean, not knowing what language Rust is written in and then shitting on Rust is pretty bold. Because it shows a level of understanding that is basically zero. <laughs> GCC, RS will be C. That's fair. LLVM is written in C? Yeah, it is. You need C to bootstrap Rust? I mean, if you bootstrap it from... Literally from, like, 2013 when the language came out. You had that pizza like I eat... Uh, you eat that jerky like I eat pizza. Is it spicy? It's not. It's, um... Applewood smoked jerky. It's really good. Rust uses libc, which is written in C. Fucking got him. Got him. <laughs> got him. What are you drinking? Water. I'd say LVM is C++. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Very C++. One of the most C++ projects. Clang optimizations. Yeah. We're, we're not going to talk about clang optimizations. I have homemade deer jerky. Phenomenal. Yeah, that actually sounds really good. I fucking love deer jerky. I just love venison in, in general. It's so good. I get venison every once in a while from my grocery store. They have, like, a bunch of local meats. Libc doesn't have to be written in C. Yeah, exactly. C works great, and I don't have to worry about pointers? What? What kind of C are you writing? And also, C doesn't work great. <laughs> C does not work great. There's, uh, there's literally no evidence that C has ever worked well. Ever. Ever. There is no programmer in the world who has written high-quality C. And I can assure you that you're not in the top 0.0001% of programmers. And the top 0.0001% of programmers suck at writing C. <laughs> OpenBSD. OpenBSD is good, but it doesn't mean it's not riddled with bugs. Riddled with corruption bugs. 
And they also have some pretty bad performance issues, too. The code quality and readability is great, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a lot of security bugs and flaws. Why do you think Ken Thompson joined Goling? Exactly. Big go. Big go. Paying off Ken, Ken Thompson. Lua is cool. Lua's okay. Uh, what's your outlook for the millions of office workers that do clerical work and understand zero programming skills? Um, if they learned them, they would show up their peers so much and they would make probably three times more money. Um, and I think they all could learn programming. Um, I think people are really scared of programming because they're scared of automation. Um, but I don't think they're actually scared of automation. I think they're just not interested in learning. Uh, and that's their excuse. Found the Clippy link. Uh, or Lint, I kicked W that. Missing safety doc. Oh, yeah. Yeah, where's your safety dock at? Is there anything in here that is safe? <laughs> C and C++ is working great. Citation needed. Yeah. Well, if people don't enjoy programming, then it's a miserable field to work. I exactly. Although, to be honest, I think a lot of people don't realize that programming is not about writing code. It's about solving a problem you have. Like, I, I don't know. I think, I think a lot of people think that, uh, like, I mean, there's a lot of people out there who think programming is a job, but I don't consider programming to be a job because I don't consider programming to be hard. Programming is just a fucking, like, language that you speak, right? <laughs> it's like saying that you don't like cars when you're in France because you have to talk about the cars in French and that means that if you're a car person you can't enjoy cars in French makes no sense to me it's, it's not it's not uh, it's literally just a way of expressing something and the thing that you express could be anything it could be like physics modeling, it could be working on your car, it could be doing some taxes, it could be reading through documentation, it could be recognizing images, it could be so many fucking things. Like, it could literally be, like, designing embroidery patterns. You can, like, take an image that you liked on, on the internet and design it into an embroidery pattern, right? <laughs> you can use programming to do anything. Like, the programming itself is such a small amount of the work. Um, could be writing scripts to snipe GPUs, yeah. It's like, you, d you don't just stop having a passion about something because you communicate it with someone else or in a different way. It's, it's ridiculous. I think the problem is there are too many people who treat programming like programming. I mean, people come in here, and, and no offense if you've asked this question, but ask, like, what languages you program in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what language you write things in, or, like, what languages you know, because it, those things don't really get in the way of accomplishing goals for really anyone. Um, like... It's just kind of not how it is. Not about the, it's not the code, it's what's between the code, yeah. <laughs> what language is like asking a painter what brush? Yeah. Because they're all basically the same. Yeah, they are the fucking same. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Okay, rewrite FuzzOS in JavaScript. Ah, <sighs> that'll be the next stream. Um. <laughs> My job is 5% programming, 95% debugging. Yep. Honestly, I don't debug code too much. Do I debug code a lot, chat? Chat, when you're hanging out here, am I debugging code a lot? I feel like I'm not. Smug Rust user. Yeah. 
Get out of here, non-Rust users. I thought this is a debugging stream. Yeah, we don't pop into debuggers much. We do a lot of print debugging. Just don't write buggy code. <laughs> I always tune into you inside of GDB trying to figure something out. But that's not debugging my code. How many... Okay, 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 chat. How many times have we been in GDB to figure out how our own code works and debug our own code versus trying to figure out what the fuck LLVM just shit out onto the disk? <laughs> Probably never. Yeah, like, when was the last time that I actually popped something in GDB and, like, looked at a local to figure out what my code was doing? It's always trying to figure out what the fuck the generated code is doing. <laughs> I don't use debuggers much. I use debuggers when I, when I do research and I'm, like, analyzing someone else's code and I'm, like, trying to figure out how it works. But I don't really use debuggers for my own code. It's not really a thing that I do. On Windows, I would do it more because Windows debugging environment is a lot better. But the Linux debugging environment is so fucking bad that I didn't even bother debugging most of the time. It's not even worth it. Debuggers for reversing and only an absolute last resort. Yeah, I don't think debuggers are a good workflow. Like, when people say, like, it's weird that you don't use debuggers or, like, knock on print debugging, I really question if they actually debug things effectively <laughs> like not really the thing oh man um i also rarely use debuggers uh is not needed to find mistakes or errors <laughs> I follow TDD pattern instead of debugging. Um, can you refresh me on TDD? Why am I blanking on that acronym right now? Um, like I always have some test file to debug. Test driven development. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TDD is the big lie. No comment. No comment. <laughs> Um, I just open the binary, uh, file in notepad and follow ones and zeros step by step and can find the bug faster than in GDB. Pretty accurate. Yeah. TDD is such a scam? Really? Man, people have, fuck TDD. People have strong opinions on TDD. Chat. I've never seen chat rant. I've ranted a lot here, but I haven't seen chat rant. What's going on, chat? You guys got to behave. I got to check on my trades. Okay, pretty neutral. Pretty neutral. Ah, respectable. Respectable. Okay, okay, okay. Got to check my tweets. TDD is hollowed out hype. I love TDD. Oh, we got a we got a good one going in chat. TDD, chat, 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 chat. <laughs> oh my god answer my questions you ask a lot of questions dude i can't get to all of them chat spamming about tdd right now we're in no rush um smoke test works for anything simple though yeah TDD is, isn't short for Tank Dedicated Dungeon. <laughs> no. No, it's not. <laughs> we got five minutes on this poll. Everyone vote for TDD or no TDD. I do Tippy, Test in Production, YOLO. I, that's what everyone does. 
<laughs> Anyone who says they don't do that is lying. <laughs> Stop lying that you love TDD. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Spooky knock knock. You don't have to be testing people in chat. We've got plenty of people here who, who understand a lot of things about computers. Testing people doesn't really make you look smarter. It makes you look like a dick. Just a pro tip. Um, gotcha questions are just cringe. TDD test driven dumpster fire. Oh my god! <laughs> I work with enterprise software half the time. Testing is deploying to prod. Yup. <laughs> oh my. Test downgraded development. Oh my god. Who would have knew this strikes such a strong nerve? I like how I like didn't even fucking know what the acronym stood for. That makes me very happy that this thing that apparently everyone knows about and is really polarizing, I don't even know it's a fucking thing. Um, why is it bad to make test files to check or run your code? It's not. <laughs> I wish there were more tests in more, uh, most projects, yeah. Sorry, bro, I'm just strong in my mind. No problem. No problem. Everyone's everyone's got their different ways. Unit tests are fine. Unit, te unit tests are okay. Unit tests are acceptable. It's not bad to write tests. It's bad to claim that you write your tests before your code. That's the lie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It makes perfect sense to write the test before the code. Maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna fence it here until the poll's done. <laughs> Uh, I like smart people a lot. Hell yeah, you're in good company here. We got a bunch of fucking nerds in here. A bunch of fucking nerds who are arguing about test-driven development and whether it's good or bad. Because apparently that's what people fucking care about. God damn you nerds. <laughs> nerds and geeks everywhere. <laughs> yeah, chat. I'm gonna give you a swirly tonight. Potentially the least smart person here. Keck W. What is Keck W from? Is that... What is Keck W? Is that... Why don't I see that? Do I need to... Do I need to add Keck W? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll go to... How do I do that? How do I allow that? I have to go to BTTV or some shit. Am I gonna remember my account? Uh, emotes, login, authorize. We allow easy and clap. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's add some more emotes. Emotes. What else do we want? What do we need, chat? <laughs> nice. Okay, chat wants nice? God, this search is ass. How do I fucking add these? Why am I not able to... What? Is there seriously no search? I have to literally scroll through them? The fuck is this? What is this? 
Oh my god, and they're done by fucking UUID or like MD5. Alright, Keck W. Okay, add to channel. Okay, Keck W's added. There's no search box! I literally have to just go through these. We added a Keck W. What else? Um. Add a Hackerman's. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, added Hackerman's. MD5 the name locally. <laughs> control F? You can't control F because it's a dynamically loading page. It, it can't get better. Or it can't get worse. Oh. <laughs> Hype E. <laughs> this is so bad! Global emotes. Oh my god, shared emotes. Oh, there's a search under shared emotes, but not under top emotes. Okay, okay. Uh, cat jam. We're getting cat jam. Which cat jam? There's so many cat jams! What?! There's so many of them! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm ser I'm searching for him. Okay, yeah, Google it to find it fast. That is pathetic. Uh, Keck W. Hello from Brazil. Hola. Ah, uh, fuck. Cat Jam. Uh, Twitch ML salaries are fucking high. Are they? I did Keck W, Peepo G, Peep, Peep, Pe Pepo, Pepo G, uh, okay, added, uh, someone wanted Yep, S Sag, I can search for Yep, Sag, 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 uh, Yep, BTTV, oh, Yep with two Ps, okay, Monka, hmm? <laughs> I love how Googling it is literally fucking faster, okay? Hmm? Adoro Gaming, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime! Pippo G added? Uh, yeah, I think I added that one. Hello from Exodar! <laughs> oh, ho, ho. I'm kinda... kinda jealous. Pippo G, didn't I add that? I think I added that. I think you need to refresh for it to come in. Why Pepo, Pep, Pepo happy? Peepo happy? Uh, the wide one? Okay, fine. Fine. Yeah, you, you have to refresh to get these. Okay, I, I refreshed. I lost all chat, so if chat is saying anything... Oh no, it remembers chat. Oh, look at that! We got emotes! Anything else? Anyone else? How many more slots do we have? Oh, we got a lot of slots, don't we? We got five more slots. Keck W. Yay, we have Keck W. Omega lol? I didn't add Omega lol? <laughs> okay. I'm adding that. We need four more. Four more, chat. Um, re emote? Uh. Okay, there you go. Got I got you re. You want five head? Um five head is very relevant to our stream to be honest. Um What's this one? Feels strong, man. Okay, okay. Added. I think we have one more. We have one more slot. Make it count, chat. Make it count, chat. This is some nice OS development. We need lol W? Oh. Shit. Okay, lol W coming in hot. Done. All right, we've maxed it out. We've got no more slots. F5, F5 for your emotes to apply. F5 to apply. <laughs> mm. 
Mod check is good. Sucks for you. Or, yeah, we're capped. Can't get mod. Pipo G is very fitting. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> right, Fuzzer? Yes! <laughs> Thanks, chat. Oh, no! Emote only mode. Wait, that doesn't work for better Twitch TV, does it? Does it? Oh, it does? No, wait. Well, now I'm confused. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, who won the poll? Uh, view results. Okay, uh, it has been officially certified by 69%. Oh, do we have nice? Did we do nice? Nice? Shit. Is there a nice emote? Oh, we might have to do... We might have to get a nice. Is there a nice? No, there's no nice. <laughs> All right, uh, we have decided that TDD is bad. Confirmed. 69% of the world believes it's bad. <laughs> nice. Oh, BTTV, nice. Ooh, look at that. Look at how advanced Chad is here. God damn. <laughs> Can't argue with 69%. Oh, man. TDD is a farce. God, we almost need a... Oh, I wonder if I actually have more emote slots. How do I unlock more emote slots? I think... I think I get more emote slots if more people subscribe to my channel. Ah. <coughs> 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 <laughs> I actually probably have some more slots that I haven't used yet. What is that under? Mo uh, moderation? Part partner? Partner? Part part partner? Why does that always work? Thank you, Joker Dan. <laughs> Why does begging work? Dude, I need to be an e-beggar. I feel like I could I could do better here. Emotes, we move. There's a new emotes page. Okay. Wait a minute. Does this seriously say I have six extra slots? <laughs> what? What? It says six open slots. Oh my god, uh... Re! <laughs> Whoops! You scammer! Haha, <laughs> gotcha! Got your five dollars! We need an unsafe Ferris. <laughs> Just ask for subs! <laughs> Time to cancel and refund! <laughs> oh my god... Oh, this is unsafe. Oh, that's good. That's so cute. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that's used in the book, and I love it. Oh, that is really good. I don't know if all of those are... Uh, um, like Creative Commons are reusable. Are you gonna write some code today? We we did write code. We did write code today. I mean, we're not done. We're we're doing a we're doing an intermission right now. We've never done an intermission like this. We've never done a midstream hangout with chat. I mean, we've done it when we've gotten raided before, but we've never done it unprovoked. So we're just kind of we're kind of just chilling. We've got we've got code up here, an excellent. Oh yeah, we wrote documentation today. That's pretty, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. 
You like my hamburger, chat? You like my hamburger? Nice cozy fire in the background. Yeah, it's uh, like getting a little warmth on the back of my head. Right? Good little hamburger. <laughs> I've got a taco here as well. <laughs> the taco. Honestly, way too much sour cream. If that's sour cream, so we got some sour cream, we got some guac, salsa, and I guess beef. W way too much sour cream in there. <laughs> what color scheme for Vim do you use? I have no idea. It's the default one. <laughs> I don't know which one it's called. Oh, yeah. I don't have any other foods around. They're all in the other room. Is my BTTV dead? Or all the emotes added except for uh, lulled uh, Keck W? Um, some of them are coming through. They might refresh on, like, random intervals. Came for the OS, stayed for the taco. Yeah, it's got a little smiley face on it. I can, uh, let me brush, let me brush the fur, the fuzz. There you go, see the little smile? <laughs> and this one has it too. Where's the face? <laughs> These things are too good. I don't even remember what hamburger was. Was hamburger an exploit? I think hamburger was an exploit. <laughs> was taco an exploit? I've forgotten now. <laughs> need a Ferris? Oh, yeah, I really do need a Ferris. Don't ignore me. I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> Let's go trolling Python. Mm. Writing Python is trolling yourself. Um, what's up with naming exploits after food? Um, it started like six or seven years ago. I kind of started naming my exploits alpha like random food. Um, and it, it, it kind of stuck with it. Now I just name them after squishable so I can justify buying another plushie. <laughs> Is that not the dream setup? It's a pretty good setup. The, f the fire's a little warm, to be honest. It's a little warmer than I prefer, but it ain't bad. <laughs> Honestly, that fire looks so good. <laughs> Business deductible. <laughs> the squishables. Will we write more code today? Yes, we will. We'll actually write code instead of documenting things. We've got, a, we've got a list of things to do. I just discovered you, and those tacos are cute. Uh, what are you primarily doing during stream? We mainly do... Uh... <laughs> I want to say we mainly do, like, hacking stuff, but we kind of do whatever the fuck we want. Uh, we just do a lot of low-level, high-performance development. <laughs> and sometimes hacking. Combine the six monitors into one big bonfire? It doesn't seem to scale performance-wise too well. <laughs> I don't understand how it's so bad. Maybe if I maybe if I close the other fires, we'll be able to get a fast big fire. <laughs> it's struggling. <laughs> I don't know why it can't scale. <laughs> that this this fire seems pretty sketch. Oh, did it die? Uh, let's see a uh, Kaka config. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't understand. 
I don't understand what it's doing that's so slow. The CPU usage is not high. Unless it's just single thread. I like I guess why would this be multi-threaded? People don't know how to write multi-threaded code. What am I fucking thinking? <laughs> Some ON squared going on there? Yup. Pretty sad, chat. Pretty sad. ON factorial. I sense a tangent in coming. No, we're not going to optimize our fire display. Ah. <laughs> uh. Rewrite it, multi-threaded. Nope. Nope. I could put it on two or four. Oh, it's like... It's going to take a minute to resize. There we go. There's some, like, stuff on the fringe. Some... Huh? Is that acceptable? Or do you like it single, single, single window? It's speeding up. Unless you want it single window. <laughs> we can matrix bait the other two. There we go. <laughs> there you go. We got a cozy fire. It's a pretty slow fire. It looks more like a lava lamp, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you burn your monitor with a candle? That, I mean, the, the monitor's back here, and the candle is here. <laughs> Heat goes up. <laughs> Heat doesn't go diagonally. <laughs> uh, spooky, you gotta stop trolling, otherwise we're gonna time you out. Don't you burn your monitor with that perf? Oh my god. No, no, we don't. Perspectives is screwing people. That's fair. To be fair, it looks like the candle is below the monitor. How? How? They've like you can see the reflection, right? Like, if it were below the monitor, the reflection wouldn't be in front of it. It would be right next to it. Right? Like, as I move this closer, the reflection will get closer to where the candle is. That's just like... Guys, do you know physics? <laughs> do you know how physics works? <laughs> do you have mod check? We do not. People don't know how reflections work, man. You're expecting too much. Expecting Twitch to know math. Let's write a ray tracer to confirm. I haven't written a ray tracer since high school. The candle takes less power to run than the GPU running the rendered flame. Oh, that's pretty accurate. What is this physics of which you speak? I don't know, some apple falling from a tree or something. <laughs> Swap GS, thank you so much for the 100 biddies. What is that? What is that? A Corgo. Thank you so much. Erg, Apple. What's your beef with Apple now? <laughs> All that speed might be on the GPU. Yeah, or CPU. Yeah. And that CPU is good. <laughs> it's the, one of the fastest. It, at least as of like six months ago or a year ago, that was the fastest single-threaded perf G CPU on the market. Some Apple capitalist propaganda. Locking in proprietary bullshit? I mean, who doesn't lock in proprietary bullshit? That's like the name of the game. <laughs> what is this PHP risk? This is evil. Get that out of here. The fuck is that? GNU doesn't. Fair. Fair point. GNU's just quality code 
all the way down. Nothing proprietary. Just hot. Yeah, locks you into a software license. Yup. Canoe does what Clang don't. Oh my god, dude. Down to the herd kernel. Why you got beef with the herd kernel? Gnu the standard Gnu herd. <laughs> uh. I doesn't I I doesn't have a working herd kernel. Does anyone have a working herd kernel? <laughs> I wouldn't use GNU and quality in one sentence. See GNU style guide. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if you don't unplug the Intel ME and AMD PSP from your CPU, don't even get me started on not going proprietary. What's wrong with a little bit of Intel ME, dude? You guys got some beef with ME? How else would I would I manage my computer? Do I come across as Tenedgy? Do I come off as teenager edgy? Yes, you do. If you genuinely are wondering, yes, you do. Um I do love reading the glibc code. How do, <laughs> who doesn't love searching through uh uh, 10 macros to find out where the actual code is. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's pretty accurate. It, the code is terrible. Oh. <laughs> Slab Sir C10 with a large chart again? Is that second time tonight? Okay, I'm gonna tune it down. No problem, dude. Everyone's got everyone's got their own way of socializing. Some people socialize in a way that's cringe, and some people don't. <laughs> GNU code makes me vomit. Ah! It, it provides value to the world, but it's not the best code. That's for damn sure. I'd take GNU C over C++ any day. Controversial opinion. Correct opinion. That's kind of screwing up my white balance, isn't it? I'm actually like 28-ish. It's fair. Cr cringe knows no bounds. <laughs> I mean it in a lighthearted way. <laughs> Thoughts on functional programming? I don't really... <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty impartial to all forms of programming. Except for Rust, which is the only right way. I think functional programming is good. Sun should be coming up soon. Yeah. You might have a point. Glibsy memcopy tries to copy on write remap the memory. What? What memory? I'm, I'm confused what you mean by that. All languages are equal, but Rust is more equal than others. Exactly. It's the only good language. <laughs> Every paradigm has its place. Logic programming is much forgotten, but can solve some tough programs. Yeah. I'm going to look into Rust. Attempt 2.0. Good fucking luck. It's a, it's a hard thing, but... Uh, Check out the Rust book, the official Rust book thing. It's the way to go. Read the book. Yup. That's all I did. I just read the book and, and that's and that's how it works. Read the fucking manual. <laughs> do do you mean this? Uh 
There you go. Do you have a degree? I do not. Um... <laughs> I don't have a degree. I'm uneducated with a J. Um... I don't know, we could we could maybe do some more more coding. Just trust chat? Why would we ever do a thing like that? Remember the last couple times we've done what chat has told us to do? Like today when chat told us how to make document comments for tables and they lied to us? Made us look like fucking idiots? <laughs> Damn, because you seem very professional with all the swearing and yelling. I, I mean, I'm relatively professional when it comes to programming, just not professional when it comes to anything else. I wrote this abomination. Ab abomin I wrote this because unsized data can't be in the middle of a structure. Head, body, tail. Oh, no. Why did he need unsized data in the middle of a structure? What kind of shit were you doing? Wait, why is this wide paper happy so small? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you get what you get. Yeah, but we bring you good tangents too. Rarely, of course. Every once, every once in a while, a good tangent. Follow us, Gamozo. A bow menation. A bow me nation. A boo me nation. <laughs> Memmap files with dynamically sized structures in a very stupid file format. Yeah, it does sound like a stupid file format. <laughs> I recently got to write some OCaml again on a personal project and it made me wide papo happy. Now I gotta write C at day job and I'm very much papo sad. It is pretty sad. You gotta go back to writing that OCaml. Damn, this song slaps. Tanache. Damn, I remember listening to Tanache a long time ago. This must be a new song. Okay, okay. Is this new? C is nice until you start calling undefined functions at runtime. What's wrong with that? Does someone complain about swearing? No. 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 <laughs> the header of the spec contains this. Date 1995. Nothing wrong with that. A little out, outdated. At some point, sign up for Frank or Z emotes as well for their real wide pepo happy. We'll do that sometime. Next time you remind me. <laughs> At my place, people would fight to do the C projects. Oh, yeah. Tenacious D, no, Tenache. Ten right? Ten tenache? Yeah, Tenache. Tenache? 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 <laughs> Was the stream uh, guarded by a mature audience only disclaimer? Yeah, I, pu I put that on so I can swear. Fuck! Oh, did I get the wrong wide papo happy? <laughs> Need to go have a chill evening. Greetings from France. Hello. What is? Why do? Why am I blanking on hello and bon bon jour? <laughs> Pointer lengths are not platform dependent. If I remember, AS400 had pointers of 128 bytes. What? Maybe 128 bit? 128 bytes? Yeah, it is It is uh, platform dependent. Yes, but it's not my fault. 
BTTV does not have the ones that are wider than one emote, but Frank or Z emotes do. Oh. Oh. Yo, shit's on fire. Shit. I need like a fire extinguisher to put it out. Oh. Who won the TDD poll? Uh, TDD is bad. Confirms 69%. Um, have you seen Cherry Arm Morello? Uh, I have not. Is that some arm chip? TDD failed the test. Yep. I didn't follow TDD as test driven development. Yeah, we were just shitting on test driven development. 31% of the viewers suck, man, right? <laughs> oh, man. Okay, okay. What am I gonna, what am I gonna listen to next? Let's just put on, let's just put this on. Oh, why did it fail? Because everyone says it sucks and is wrong and stupid. And they're all right because... Because now that we have voted that it's bad, it's just bad. Can't argue with that. Um, all right. So we did all the documentation. Um, now what do we have to do? What's the first thing? ACPI must return parsed data. Well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Parse more SPCR information? That sounds boring. Add still data support to the memory map? Sounds boring. Do something about serial device global. I don't want to. Custom UEFI spec with single thread false. I don't want to do that either. All these things sound boring. Hmm. Well, I guess we should do the SPCR informa information because the ACPI one requires that we finish SPCR first. Ha, huh, I, I guess. Why is serial device a global? So we can access it from prints. Um, it takes in a gas. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Trying to think how we want to architect this. How do I want to do this serial device global? So I can... There's a couple different ways I could go about this. So first of all, I don't want this to be pub, but that's easy. I'll make a pub function to access it. I mean, do I just do static mute? And just call it a day there? Hmm. Well, we got to do a couple things. We got to move gas into a module. Yeah, let's, let's add more to our list. 
We also have to add gas to a module. Um, because we have to pass that to the next stage. And then we have to... What do we do after that? Once we add gas to a module, we also need to do range set to a module. That has to go, or not into a module, but a library. What else? Is there any other major code refactor? I think once we have gas, I could honestly move gas into serial, but gas belongs with ACPI and maybe in its own place. Where do you order your plushies? I just get them off Amazon or directly from uh, Squishables. Mainly get them directly through Squishables depending on what's in stock. Sometimes, sometimes I have to go and find stock from a different place. Gas doesn't make sense in cereal. I agree. But I'm just trying to not have, like, a bunch of libraries that are pretty empty. Um... Okay. I guess I can just move gas into a module. Um and range set or gas and uh range set into libraries. Let's uh let's start with range sets. Um make dir shared. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you guys. Car cargo new uh, cargo lib uh dot dot slash source rain mm range set into s range set source lib vim cargo.toml dependencies range sets is equal to path equals shared range set vim source mm dot rs vim source main what am Vim source main range set. Range set is going to be used in ACPI. Uh, range. Not there. We will actually use it in ACPI soon when we finish up ACPI and range set is going to just come from range sets do we really need self range sets error yes we do yep we do need to do that okay good uh, technically we can do this okay uh, source Shared range set source. Does Clippy work on dependencies? No standard. By Gauss. Typo? Oh, yeah, I did fuck that up. Thank you. Typo on line one. First line of code. Fucking wrong. Um, 
Yeah, does Clippy work on dependencies? You can make it work for a cargo workspace. There's no like override for that. Um, check all binaries, check all targets, no, cargo workspace, I don't want to do a workspace. Why not? Maybe I do want to do a workspace. Last time I tried workspaces, they were pretty fucked. But that was like three years ago. So what's the point? They share common dependency resolution with a shared cargo lock, output directory, and various settings. Um, in the workplace root, common output directory, And tooling allows for dash dash workspace. Cargo build can use dash p or dash dash workspace. So. So they use the same output directory. Do they use the same cargo config? All path dependencies residing in the workspace automatically become members. I'm trying to think what this is going to do for me because I'm going to have two different I'm going to have two different binaries that I'm going to build. And it will be okay with that, won't it? Will that actually cut down on the amount of building? Will they be able to share the same like core? You can have multiple bins. Can I have a build.rs on a workspace? Yeah, or just multiple crates. Okay. Okay, so this is gonna be bootloader. We're gonna move the cargo.toml and then We'll move the cargo.toml and source into the bootloader. Make clean, or cargo clean. Your workspace root can be a crate itself. We'll remove cargo lock. Okay, so bootloader just has cargo.toml and source. And we have dot cargo and all that stuff here.
Okay. So. Can I just have a workspace where it's not actually a, a, a program here? And then I just say members is equal to shared slash star and bootloader. Yeah. And then what do I do? Cargo build. Um, so cargo dock workspace, fill to read range set cargo toml. Um, what? Oh. And then does this still need the path-based dependency? And we'll say bootloader. Okay. So what is that done with the shared? Documenting range set. Hey, nice. I'm actually going to put the clippy things. Oh, all that shit moved. Uh, Clippy. A. Allow Clippy. And then, um, deny. I guess we can just do forbid. It doesn't really matter. Missing docs and private items. Uh, cargo build help. Okay. So, will Clippy do missing docs on non-private or do I have to put missing docs in all my crates? Because I don't want to have to put that same header in every crate. It's going to be really annoying. Okay, so if I have a public thing that I don't document, will it get mad at me? Um, e, SPI. Here we go. Pub. Get rid of that. Missing documentation requested missing docs and private items. So I think that implies missing docs. Um, trying to see. Yeah, settings in the makefile are shared. Yeah, I know that. I, I just don't know if... um. I don't know if I need to... I guess... I can do missing docs. And that's like the normal one. So if I do this... Right, this should get mad at me. No. Uh, is this Rust doc? Okay. 
Well, this seems to work. Okay. Well, we're going to go with that. Source main. Okay. And then make... Got to fix that. Um, what was the? What was it? There we go. So will when I add another kernel. Oh yeah, and that is using the cargo toml. Sick. All right. Um, profiles from the non-root package will be ignored. Specify profiles at the workspace. Try adding warn pedantic, see how much it complains. I actually like these. I like a lot of these. Oh, I need a space there. Might lose the sign. Okay, that one I don't care about. That, yeah. Some of these are bad. Um, some of these are really good, though. I did wonder about this. Um, is U64 from not silent? Does that panic? No, but it's explicit. I mean, isn't as U64 explicit? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so... I like this quite a bit. If it's changed to return to U128, silently truncates. That's fair. I see what you mean. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I actually like that. I might do those, and I might do this. This one I like quite a bit. Cast possible truncation. Uh, and we could go really heavy on try intos and use try intos basically anywhere we're working with U sizes and shit like that. Um. Okay, so if I make a kernel. Well, how do I want to do this? Oh, that's building. It's already done. Okay. 
And then target release bootloader.efi. Eric64 release fuzz. Oh, it's not fuzzOS, it's bootloader. Hmm. Bootloader.efi. Make. Okay, and I should be able to boot this, and it will take effect. Wonder how big the overhead of trying to is? Zero. Yeah, zero. Right. Literally a move, right? But if we said target is I six eight six PC Windows MSVC Unconditional Panic. What's the difference between try into and as? Uh, try into make sure that the conversion is lossless. So when we build it for a 32-bit architecture and this truncates, this panics. Technically, this returns a result and it's on us to handle the results. Can't wait for Rust 2021 to add try into and uh, try from to the preload. Yeah, they should. They really should. What's all scheduled for Rust 2021? Inline assembly merged. Okay. It's going to be pretty light on changes. Is this the right place to look for that info? Safe transmute project group has per... Oh my god, if we get safe transmute, I'm just going to fucking never stop writing Rust. What's the state of this? Oh my god, we're getting it, aren't we? We're getting it, dude. Type pub type foo's bar and pub use bar is foo interchangeable. Import standard iter so you get once and stuff. Debugging display to the prelude. Totally agree with that. Hash? Maybe. Tracking issue. Things to consider. Try from try into? Question mark. Display. It's rarely called directly, but more often implemented. I do think that when you implement format, it's a mess when you implement display. 
In addition to try into, I find adding path and path buff, hash map and hash set, arc and mutex. Yeah, I, I think I agree with all of these. Wouldn't add display, because for implementing it, it needs formatter and result. Yeah. Error. Cow, yeah, all of the collections file. Oester and OS string, I don't think those are used frequently enough, but to be honest, they are so unconflicting with other names that I don't think they pollute the namespace. Like, trying to and try from. Remove drop from the prelude? It's not in the prelude, is it? I didn't know it's in the prelude. Yeah, I always do standard mem drop. I didn't know that. Hash map and hash set probably break people. Error definitely would. Error would break a lot of shit. I don't think try into and try from would. Path and path buff. Ha like, I like all these, to be honest. If I made a hash map, I wouldn't call it hash map. PPUs drop often. I use drop quite a bit. Do I use it in here? Nah, not yet. I use drop so I can decrease the amount of indentation on scopes sometimes. All right, so um, we're going to go and... Okay. So, if I make a new binary, oh, profiles for their non-root package will be ignored. Um, okay. There we go. Makes sense for mutexes. Yeah, I think arc, mutex, honestly, RC, even like ref cell. I can't imagine anyone overriding any of those, but. Unsafe ref cell? You mean unsafe cell? <laughs> unsafe ref cell? Did I say unsafe ref cell? Damn, this is fucking good, dude. Like... Will it break code because they'll all be shadowed by use? I don't know. Transmute and transmute copy, yeah. We're getting them for sure. We're for sure getting them. The language is powerful enough to do it without really many changes. And it's going to make Rust arguably the best language in the world for working with binary formats. It's going to be fucking unreal, dude. Like, parsing a file in Rust will be absolutely fucking insane. It'll be so good. So fucking good. <laughs> transmute and transmute copy are unsafe transmutes, but I'm talking about doing safe transmutes. Safe transmutes will allow you to basically treat data as other data uh, as long as it has the right alignment and size requirements. So you could cast like a U32 to a four bytes if you want, or four bytes into a U32 if they're aligned, or do it by copy and they don't have to be aligned. Is safe transmute still encoding the soundness information? I don't know, and I hope not. I think the soundness thing is the only thing I think is fucking stupid. 
Was it soundness? Was the soundness the thing that meant that it wasn't going to change or some shit? I can't remember. I, I, I feel like it should just be like, can the file be transmuted into and can it be transmuted from bytes? And you can derive everything from that. I understand the point. The point is that, like, people don't rely on the shape of something for, like, serializing. Um, when that thing might change out from under you, but come on, dude. Is it a good way to do graphs and rust? Um, smart, smart pointers to solution? I mean, you can do graphs in many different ways in rust. You can, you can do graphs with you know, standard references, uh, depending on mutability, you can do it with RCs, you can do it with arcs, um, to be honest, performance-wise, graphs are best done with indices, um, kind of how it often goes. I see arenas used a lot, yeah, I do arenas for shit like that, too. Um, okay, so we're in a good state here. We want to, we're gonna move gas in, uh, okay, so that's, range set has been moved to a library. Find star, grab range sets. Yeah, so range set is literally already in, our, in a library, so that's done. So we can, we can cross off our first thing today on the checklist. Next, we're gonna move gas into a module, and this one's pretty tricky. This one's pretty tricky. Um, how hot does this CPU get? Literally no heat. I love how the fucking 10 gig NICs on this get so much hotter than the CPU. And I'm not even using those NICs. It's kind of interesting. I would feel like they should go into a low power state when the NICs aren't being used, but they're dissipating a lot of heat. Yeah, they're they're like warm to the touch. And nothing's plugged in. I would expect like if nothing is plugged in and nothing is seen on the link that they should just go to like literally just fucking shut off. <laughs> like save config to non-volatile space and just shut off. I mean, you could even save it to like SRAM and just only keep the SRAM lit up. Nothing's hot happening. Why are you hot? Yeah, I honestly have no idea. Yeah, for graphs, I just used indices, but I used indices in an, ar in an array. <laughs> that's, that's what I did. I don't know. I don't like using pointers for graphs. I did that in my first IL, and I changed out of it very quickly, and I switched to indices in an array, and it was so much faster. He needs to remove nodes? He just... You just repurpose the indice, and you stop referencing it. <laughs> when you remove a node, you just you just stop referencing the the indice. Using indices makes this reallocating easier. Yes, because you just copy things as a blob. You don't have to do like sparse gathering. Uh, like, I mean, obviously, if you're doing just like pointers, you can just link things in, but. It kind of depends what you're optimizing for, but if you're traversing a graph, it's so much faster to use indices in an array. Um, yeah, and like what I did is I used uh, I used indices where I used like a U16 for the indices, and then I did an array that was 64K elements, and then Rust would never emit a bounds check because it could guarantee that everything's in bounds. It's fucking gorgeous. So good. So good, dude. Maybe you can help Gazmozo with his nicks. I don't know. I, I've found that using indices is, is often so much better. Okay. Um, What do we want to do here? Move gas into a module? Okay, fine. God, this, like, paper is taunting me. Uh, cargo, new, lib, gas. Check. 
generic address structure. Is that what it's called? I think it's a generic address structure. No! Where's the documentation at? Okay. Oh, I see. Bootloader and range set are separate. So is there no index? Huh. Okay. Um, that is currently an ACPI gas. Generic access structure. Access. Okay. Uh, we're going to edit sort uh, shared. Bye. Get rid of that test. Fuck test oriented programming. Okay, we're gonna have to move all of these gas errors somewhere else, but that's okay. TDD haters all around you. Fuck, fuck TDD. Get out of here, dude. Imagine using TDD. You just you you look like a fool. Access size IO adder. Gas gas type from um a library which implements support for the ACPI generic access structure. Uh, we implement this in its own library such that uh, information parsed out from ACPI can easily be passed to ACP, ACPI unaware code. Okay, we're gonna have build problems for a little bit here, chat. Generic access structure. Okay. No standard. Okay, already got problems. Uh, type results is equal to Traps a gas error. Okay, uh, pub enum error. Drive debug a generic access structure error. Okay. S1234 gas with 1234G. Gas. Send us error gas with error. Wow, we're making good progress. Fizz at her. Fuck! Well, this just got really hard. Oh 
man. Uh... Oh my god, dude. Well, this just got really fucking hard. Um, I don't... I don't know how... How am I going to do this? Move Fizz Adder into its own crate. The problem is the kernel and the bootloader won't have the same view of physical memory. In fact, the kernel won't be able to read physical memory. I might have to move gas into cereal. Gas in my cereal. <laughs> Shit. I need I need to get my raisins. Raisins will solve this.
Oh. <sighs> RDD. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, raisins are good. Mmm. How many drivers are we going to have? Just cereal that uses the gas? Bad time to join. Came coming to gam. Cream in his pants due to raisins. Raisins are fucking delicious. I'm gonna go eat. Yeah, go eat, dude. <laughs> I like one TDD. Twitch driven development. Oh, God. Yeah, how do I want to do this? I don't think I have a, a slick way to have, like, no overhead. <sighs> um... I'm not sure you have enough monitors. No, never enough monitors here. <laughs> Dude, why are raisins so fucking good? Literally the best damn snack you can get. Fuck y'all. Yeah. Mmm. Mamma mia. Pizzeria. Um. So... There's a couple ways we could go about trying this. Too much sugar IMO? Oh yeah, that's the best part about them. So I could make a cereal library, and I could put gas in the cereal library. Mmm. Do I change these from not, uh, change these out of physical addresses? That's one path that I could take. I might just make these virtual addresses. I think that's gonna be the play here. Okay, um... <sighs> Base address? Do I just throw it in a U size? Or do I say const U8?
adder dot zero adders a pointer register with this u64 you uh, register with u8 let's go to u sizes index is a u size Okay, um, checked mole, register width divided by eight as u size, and then checked add address as u size as const u8. And that's fine. We're doing it, chat. We're doing it, chat. We're going to make progress. Fizz adder. U size from Ellie Bytes as const U8. IO address, that one we can treat as a U64. This one we treat as a U size. It's a U64. Okay, no more fizz adders. 427. You got a problem with that? DRF adder is U size. Okay. Uh, 288. Read. Okay, we're going to do adder as const U8. Okay. Okay, chat. This is going to be the one. This is the one. U163264. Times DRF adder as const as mute u8 equals val as u8. Sixteen thirty-two sixty-four. Eight eight sixteen thirty-two sixty-four. Okay, adder. We're gonna say this is mute. Mute. Ah. Uh, Four thirty. I guess this one's mute self. No, does it? Four thirty. Oh, this is mute U eight. Okay, no gas in ACPI. Oh, we did it!
Warren Private Intra Docklings. I think we'll be using that pub anyways. Use generic access structure gas. Um... Progress is being made. Chat, progress is being made. We don't have a safety section? Time for some more raisins. Oh, raisins. Totally save transmute. <laughs> I like, I like the totally safe transmute crate. Oh yeah. All right, they want some fucking safety. It's only for pub functions, I guess. We should have a lot of shit marked unsafe. Unsafe, 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 unsafe. Lots of unsafe, unsafe. Um, uh, this function directly accesses the memory addressed by the uh, gas. Um, this likely will result in MMIO accesses and thus uh, needs to be handled uh, within the um, needs to be handled uh, with the correct memory mappings um, and device models for the target device. Okay, safety. It's the same shit here. Okay, uh, we got result issues on bootloader access size undefined. Results since serial. Results. Let's fucking go. Couldn't convert into ACPI error.
Yes! Yes, this is gonna be good! Wait, where are we using these? Yeah, we're not doing that here. Let's fucking go! Easy! How do I want to do this? Well, I guess gas is now in a module. Confirmed. Gas in a library, not in a module. I wrote module, and I keep saying module. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to return struct acp. Good, 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 good. SPCR? Option SPCR. Uh, contains information about information about the serial device. Um... Uh, from the, uh, from ACPI data structures. Okay, um, this is just information parsed out of ACPI. Let me, SPSR is none. SPCR. SPCR is some. Okay, uh, returns a uh, parsed ACPI. Information on success, ACPI, SPS, SPCR. Hub. Okay. So then the bootloader source main ACPI. This will get the ACPI information. And then we'll have a pick information and X to a pick information. That's going to be off the MADT. A picks. So we'll have local a picks, max cores. Const uh, 
Uh, maximum number of uh, cores on the system. Uh, X2 Apex, num Apex, num X2 Apex. Number of Apex, uh, er, shit. Bam. Okay. Dink, 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 dink. Default is fine here because we wouldn't use anyone where the flags are zero. So zero flags mean it's not enabled and it's not online capable, so we'll ignore it. So thus... Uh, we can safely do a, a zeroed, um, we can zero these out without having this set option. Okay. Um, local Apex detected from ACPI. Um, number of, a do I even give a shit? Yes, I need to know where to, which one's free. Number of Apex, uh, which have been initialized in Apex. Number of X2 Apex in X2 Apex. Local X2 Apex. How big is this structure? Uh, Repper C packed. And we do directly read those. Okay, um, so these are packed. So this is uh, uh, for six bytes times 512, 3K. And this one is four times three plus two, 14 times 512, it's 10K. I don't know how big the stack is from Yuffie. Stack. Surely that's not the only reference. Oh, it's finding them. Really? How do I know what size the stack is? Do I just not know the size of the stack? Sick. Hmm. 
I have no idea how big the stack size is. I wonder if it gets it from the PE header. That'd be pretty advanced, but maybe it does. Um... Let me ret is equal to uh, self default. Hopefully the MADT we can derive default, but I don't think we can. Nope. It's okay. But I can do this, can't I? Yeah, I can. Um, x2 apex 0. Uh, create an empty um, MEDT. Beautiful. MADT dot get oh, ret dot apex dot get ret dot num apex get mute okay or um Too many CPUs. Uh, more CPUs have been detected than uh, we statically allocate uh, room for. Too many CPUs is equal to a pick. Update a pick information. Retinum a picks plus equals one. Oh my god, I'm fucking brilliant. X2, 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 X2. Uh, too many uh, Apex. More Apex. More X2. Too many X2 Apex. This is an X2 Apex. X2 Apex. Plus equals one. Capital A. When are we making a programming language that's case insensitive? We're gonna capitalize this. Okay. 
Oh, that's not what we wanted. Uh, Kimu. X664. And then the folder is Pixie Root. Yep. Is that failing to boot? Let's see if this fills to boot. Do we not print anything? No, we print shit here. I think we exhausted the stack. It's the only thing that would make sense, IMO. Oh, um, we, yeah, we don't print anything. Because the next stage won't print. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Say max core is eight. Sick. Oh, and we have to run make. Moose. Okay, we got a moose. Set this to 512. Moose, fantastic. Okay. Um, all right. Nice. Uh, contains information about the Apex from the MADT. It's MADT, right? Yes. Information APCI A A C P I uh, M A D T non S P C R non. Okay, Rhett. Rhett dot M A D T is equal to this. Rhett dot this is this. Yeah, let's fucking do this! Leroy Jenkins. All right. So, print. Ret, M-A-D-T, unwrap. As, uh, if let some... MADT is equal to uh, ret MADT as ref. Um, MADT dot num apex num x2 apex. Eight and zero. Okay. Nice. Oh, that machine just rebooted. Fuck yeah. 
we'll get to see what that looks like on hardware. Uh, this one should just print moose, I think. Apex X2 Apex Apex 223 and X2 Apex 33. Okay, 223 plus 33 is 256. Fuck yeah. Okay, and then on the ARM hardware, there's no Apex or X2 Apex. There is an MADT. Good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, let's set the let's set max cores to two. Let's make sure our system fails correctly. It will, because we can't we can't make a mistake because we're literally perfect. Too many apex. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. How are we so smart, chat? Okay, so now we're returning information about the Apex. God, I do wonder how big the stack is. We're putting a lot of stuff on the stack. That's okay, that's okay. It's okay. Okay, Rhett, so that's returning out that information. Now we do get memory map, and r we really want to do this here. Memory map, stale data, and the Eufy spec. What does the Eufy spec say? System, no. What is it? Um, where's the shit that I care about? System tables. No, I want the EFI spec. Why was I looking at the ACPI spec? Yikes. No wonder I didn't find information about the stack. Holy shit. Stack after address of entry point called? System table EFI handle return address. That's I32. Calling conventions. 128 kilobytes or more of available stack space. Okay, so we know you have 128K of stack space. Easy, dude. Easy. 128k, that's more than we'll ever need. That's a big ass stack. Okay. Well, that's basically infinite stack storage. Um, how much did we compute we allocated? 
10k. Sorry, at like 10k right now. Okay. We're good. We're good. It might get big. <laughs> we'll see. Oh my god, dude. Raisins are so good. Who needs to eat when you have raisins, you know? Okay. Um... So, uh, EFI, we're looking at boot services. I love how you can't expand this. Like, you, you can't fucking make this wider. Why is the Chrome... Why is the Chrome PDF reader so fucking bad compared to the Firefox one? The Firefox one is so fucking good... And this one is so fucking bad. Returns a copy of the current memory map. Map is an array of memory descriptors. If the memory map buffer is too small, then buffer too small is returned. Um... Status codes return success. So I'm getting a warning stale data. And where was that from? Where are the codes? Where the fuck were those codes defined? And tag. Air status fields. Air types. I don't think I want that. Dude, this, ugh, this PDF reader is so fucking bad. EFI status code ranges. Here we go. Success. Warning codes. The data has not been updated within the time frame set by local policy for this type of data. So what the fuck do I do? I just call it again? You think I just call it again? Um, if I get memory, loop, And then we're not going to exit boot services. Oh, we got to probably put a break in there. Okay. So this should go to the next stage and print out information about memory. Yeah, so you see all the memory ranges, and then 
physical memory free. So we're waiting for this computer to reboot. We can uh, reboot this arm box. Uh, SSH polar, sudo reboot. Um, chassis, power, reboot, a reset. All right, so we reset this machine. This machine will be coming online too. Yeah, so no Apex, no X2 Apex. That makes sense. Okay. I'm just curious if this is going to work with that loop. I wonder if it will be uh, stale forever. If it's not successful, continue. My guess is that it doesn't allocation internally or something. But we'll see. If it doesn't, then maybe we have to work with stale data. I feel like that would be weird. Warning stale. Okay, this machine worked fine. That's good. Got all the RAM. This one, no, it's looping. So I guess I just ignore it if it's a warning. Oh. Uh... The fuck? Data has not been updated within the time frame set by local policy for this type of data. The fuck does that mean? Hmm. This attribute. Like, this doesn't say it can return that. Can't edit emotes in Discord either. Yeah, get fucked. Get fucked, dude. I'm eating my raisins. Getting the warning treatment. Yeah, what the fuck do I do here? Am I just fucked?
It should be replaced. Stale data. They should be replaced. Okay, okay. The fuck does that mean? Uh, re. Internal policies and limits should be replaced. Um... Okay. Okay. If it's an error, and then warnings, we'll let warnings through, and we'll see if we get the correct results rebooting that machine. We'll reboot Polar as well. Okay. So, rebooting all of these. So, every all of these machines will be rebooting. So, this one's working. Found eight Apex, zero X2 Apex. Bunch of shit there. Okay, uh, we have RAM, which is good. RAM looks good here, ranges look good. Found a fun bug in Rust format. Huh. Memory map out of bounds. Dude, what the fuck? tokenize the comment what else are you gonna tokenize um so how does this work i feel like we're calling the wrong function Get offset. Remember when we put this in really fucking pedantically? And we're like, what if what if the memory map service reports some bogus shit and that causes us to go out of bounds of our array? And everyone in chat was like, wow, you're really pedantic and dumb. And I was like, no, I'm big brain, because like a lot of these firmwares are just really fucky. And then it turns out I'm just a genius.
This is why we write very defensive code when we work with third-party code, because third-party code is always the problem. I'm really curious. Uh, usable memory dot, um... Entries. We're gonna see if we make one loop iteration through here. I'm curious if we never make an iteration through. I'm not sure. I guess we'll print here. Hey, I'm one of y'all. How's it going? M desk size. I feel like we're calling the wrong function, but that would make no sense. Like it, it literally feels like this function pointer is not at the same location on this hardware. And like, they just don't have get memory map. Okay. It's looping through stuff, but... N Dude, it's... It's giving us garbanzo beans. <sighs> okay. Reboots. Am I not supposed to use it if it's still? Size 2400, key 2505, mdesk 48, version 1. We'll see what it is on these other hardwares. I'm guessing this is pretty common. mdesk 48, version 1. Forty eight ver one. And that's yeah, that's what we would expect. Forty eight version one. S Are you fucking kidding me, dude? So like, I'm like, yo, dog. I I got I got some memory here. It, it's it's 4K in size. I've got a dude. Is it corrupting my fucking memory? It it returned fucking 12K into my 4K buffer. Fuck off. What are you doing? Oh my god, that's why it's returning a warning. It's probably fucking my stack up. Hello? Are you fucking kidding me? On input, it's the size of the buffer allocated by the caller. On output, it's the size returned by the firmware. If the buffer was large enough... Or the size, it, if, uh, 
If the buffer was too small... Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Are you serious right now? Pointer to the buffer which firm replaces the current memory map. You piece of shit. Unless it's just returning, maybe it's just returning the wrong error? I mean, it's returning a warning. And get memory map, okay. So get memory map. If I buffer too small, the memory map was too small. The current buffer size needed to hold the memory map is here. And buffer too small is a fucking error. Like, if I were to ever get a buffer too small, it would be obvious because it would literally be a fucking error. That's not a warning. Dude, I... Oh my god! Okay, so let's... We're gonna print... We're gonna print, uh... We're gonna print the memory map. We zero it out. If this thing is not fucking zero, I swear to God, dude. I swear to God, it's fucking corrupting memory. What, do you just, just write your shit to- Oh my god, dude. So, like, this one- This one looks good. It's zero, and then we have some, like, shit filled in every- every once in a while. But this one seems to respect our size. If I status- I mean, that would be in a register. <laughs> what do you think's gonna happen, chat? Is this going to be filled in? Literally in out. And we fucking, we give it the size. We say the size is this. Okay, nothing's filled in. Okay, so maybe it's not filling it in. So let's com let's compare implementations. We're gonna we're gonna go to uh, four times one thousand twenty four, in EFI. Right. So here we're just gonna set this to like. 128 bytes, right? And we're gonna see what other implementations do when I give it too small of a buffer. Let's see. Let's see, we'll try it on two pieces of hardware. We're trying it on ARM and we're trying it on this. Oh, memory map out of bounds. Does it not return a fucking error? If frets not equal to EFI Does this give a warning stale data? Okay, it does The spec says The spec says Buffer too small if it's too small. Why 
Why would it return stale data? What are you on, dude? The fuck? What, like what? Is my error parser wrong? Maybe that's it. Maybe I, maybe I parse this wrong. Is this... It is off by one. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. Oh my god. This is so bad, dude. <laughs> this fucking search. What is this search? How long does it take to search a fucking document? <laughs> Status codes. High bit clear, high bit clear, value one. High bit set, high bit clear. Yeah, so here are the ranges. Warning codes. Yeah, high bit clear. Val is I32, is I64, is U64. Val and not one shift sixty three. Buffer too small five. Oh, my God. I think I know what it is. Look at this. For a warning, value five is still data, but for an error, buffer too small is value five. I bet the implementation returns a warning with the error value. Because look, they're fucking swapped. The two are swapped, and it probably doesn't set the warning or error bit correctly. Oh my god. Well, luckily we have the source. Let's, uh, let's go check out the source. Um...
Where's the memory map? SMM. Memory attributes. Get memory map. This is getting it. Current memory map. Mem data. Um. I I guess we can say or for too small. I'm just trying to find this code. I I I guess we just have to clone this because there's a chance that uh that we don't actually know what's happening here due to GitHub search. Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, buffer two. Sort memory map? That might get us to where we need to go. Arm for get memory map. Core get memory map. Let's try this. EFI API. Okay. Returns buffer too small. It was too small. Okay. Yeah, this is what we're calling. Memory... Map size, if it's null, invalid parameter. Down here, returns status is buffer too small. And this is return buffer too small, which is encode error five. So that's max bit. Oh my god, we truncate the bit off like a fucking idiot because we do this. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing this? This is just wrong, because we truncate the top bit. Ah, oh, we fucked up. Is that really... Thirty-two bit range. Um, um. Max bit, okay. How do I want to do this? Y 
Why did I think this would work? How do I want to do this? Val. I don't think there's a trick here, is there? Hmm. Is that what I intended to do? I think this is what I wanted to do. Because we store it as a U size. Casting it to an I size does nothing. If it were 32 bit, this would sign extend it. Although that would be wrong in these situations too. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I size. Value dot zero. Can you literally cast it in I side and check? Yeah, less than greater than zero. I can do that, but then I have to get the value from it. Okay. Oh, and core. Um, and zero should overlap there, so hopefully this gives me an error or a warning.
And then I guess here I just do match val.abs. And we can do an X binding here. It doesn't know. Masking top bits not equal to absolute value. Yeah, it's actually true. Um, yeah, I guess we got to get the top bit. Oh, my God. I guess we can say if it's less than zero. Success, error, uh, warning. And then here's self. Match val dot zero. As you size. Okay. Match value. This. Value. There we go. We got there, chat. I was trying to be more creative than this, but whatever. I'm not happy about it. Okay, if it's equal to zero, it's just success. If it's less than zero, then it's an error. Fine, we'll say if it's equal to zero. Ah, if it's greater than zero. If it's equal to zero, it's success. If it's greater than zero, it's a warning. If it's, uh, otherwise it must be less than zero. And that is an I size. And then we convert it to a U size and uh, basically erase that bit. So erase the top bit. And I think this is now correct. Value is U64. Woo! Okay, error, buffer too small. We did it!
We did it. See, that wasn't too bad. Fucking yikes. Okay, everything's being rebooted right now. Oh boy. Beep. All right. Good. I can't believe we fucked that up so bad. <laughs> Holy shit. This is, uh, erase the top bit of the status code. If it's greater than zero, otherwise, it's an error. So that one's good. Now these ones are going to be good too. Now everything's going to work. Yay! I can't believe it needed that much space. Like this needed so much stack space. Actually ridiculous. 120 gigs? Yeah, that's right, because it's, uh, it's got 96 gigs plus 16 gigs built into the processor. 1024, 1024, 1024. Yep, 12259. Yeah. All right. Good. Good. We did it. We did it. Okay, now it's working on everything. We get those ranges. All right, nice, some low memory in there. Okay. And we're getting that after the fact, so that gets printed out. Moose, Apix. So we have Apix information. Uh, we have a print in ACPI. This we don't need to print. So we return that information out. Technically the top byte is used? What, what do you mean by that? Okay, so, add still data support, okay, done. So that's done. Um, ACPI must return parse data, that's done. Do something about serial device global. Custom UFI spec with single thread false. And parse more SPCR information. The top three bits. I don't see what you mean. It's it's going all the way up to the top of the range. Like warnings extend from zero all the way to uh, negative max and then negative max to i guess oh this one only goes to c so the warnings use the full range but the errors don't
Is this a typo in the spec? Zero, one, two to three, four to seven, eight to nine, A to B, C. What? Is that true? Like, this extends all the way to F. Like, all of these are identical. They're just extended. But except for this one. I really wonder if that's fucking correct. That being said, mine should be fine. I don't see any issue with mine. Yeah, I don't I don't see how mine would be wrong. Yeah, I think we're fine. Okay, um Okay. So, we initialize ACPI. We need to parse... We need to parse more from SPCR, and that's easy. Um, yeah, I think we'll wrap up the serial device by doing more SPCR parsing. SPCR coming from ACPI. And we parse the SPCR, we get the gas. So right here, we parse out the gas. 